Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Selectman's meeting for June 17th, 2013. Uh, just a reminder to everybody that uh, during, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, we have informal meetings, which means uh, some of us choose to take advantage of it and not wear a tie. Right, Perfect. Diane? Uh, the tie's in the back until September. All right. Um, first up is our consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have the minutes of meetings for June 3rd, 2013. We have a vote for the Arlington segment of the Susan G. Komen three-day breast cancer walk and a year-end transfer from the deputy town manager. I just want to note that we have on our desk, what something was in our packet, um, a memo from Officer Rateau uh, regarding the Komen walk. We're saying uh, there are currently no objections and Sergeant Kiernan from the, has been in contact with Ms. Ricker. And so that I got, there's a tentative safety meeting planning on June 25th. Uh, and Andrew, did you want to talk about? Uh, no, you, but Andrew's here if he wants to have questions. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, if I could ask my colleagues in Belgians that first, I make a motion to approve 1A and 1B. Okay. Uh, I, I do I have comments on them. Okay. Uh, on and, and the reason why on 1C, I'm going to ask for two separate motions, and I'll explain when we get there. So move to approve on 1A and 1B. Second. 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 Okay. Comments, Mr. Kira. Um, yeah, I would like to just ask that the record um, on the minutes reflect um, under uh, item six that um, during discussion I did state that I had no objection to the issuance of a permit for three um, three tables and that my only objection was based on um, the the uh, passage between the, the bike rack and and that fourth table. I, I don't want it misconstrued. Mrs. Uh, Kropalka, you got that? I'll talk to him afterwards. <laughs> okay. okay. So with that, uh, ch let's accept that change, Mrs. Mahal. And then on um, 1B, uh, I do as a cheerleading coach, uh, the Arlington High School. Wait, I'm sorry, where are you? Oh, I'm sorry. On 1B, the Susan G. Coleman. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah. I, I just want to, once again, just bring to the town manager's attention that not so much that the cheerleaders are involved, but one of the other things that we're asked to do is um, have the hose, ho I call it hosing stations. And usually DPW, either Jimmy Dodge or Dan Warren. Um, and it's only on excessively hot days. We set them up, the cheerleaders take care of it. So when the walkers come through, they can walk through a mist. And I was just looking at the CCs. Um, so for that particular function of it, I'll just leave it with the town manager to once again coordinate that through DPW. Okay. Is there anyone here from the walk who wanted to speak? Okay, any further discussion? Consent agenda minutes as amended and the walk subject to conditions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mrs. Mahan. Okay. Um, if I could, I have one question um, to my colleagues and then one question to the town manager and or. Do you want to make a motion first? Uh, first, I'd like to make a motion to approve the end of year transfer request with the exception of the comptroller request as, um, and I've spoken to town council about this, it speaks to transferring money because one telephone operator was out sick and another telephone operator had to fill in and that telephone operator is my mother. So Sorry. what I'd like to do is vote the rest of the requests as one vote yep. and I can vote for that and then take that separate and we'll I will that abstain. Yep. And okay. okay. Uh, so we have a motion. Second. 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 And, and I you had a question. Mr. Just ha Long. have one question. If um, the town manager, and I don't expect you to know this off the top of your head, um, if you could provide to the board um, the, uh, because we've had two or three vendors on the IT department request because there was a vacancy, I believe somebody retired and we hired an outside um, IT vendor as well as uh, anticipate either continuing that or going with another IT vendor. If we could just get some information on that. I'm just curious if it's one and the same, who the vendor was and what the services were. And, yeah, and I really I do have a, oh, unless you already know the no, answer. I can provide that for you. Okay. Any further discussion on this one? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 But I have a motion for the remaining transfer. So moved. Second. Okay. So any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those abstaining. Aye. Three zero one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
We have appointments up next. Arlington Historic District Commissions. Is Charles Berry and Michael Bush here? Could you uh, both, why don't you come on up to the microphone? And uh, you can go, you can race to see who gets to the microphone first. <laughs> uh, we've got your uh, CV, your resumes or whatever that you sent us. We read it. Thank you very much for volunteering. Could you just tell us a little bit about what brings you to this commission and why you're interested in helping out? I've lived in Arlington for 30 years. Could you start with your name? I can't tell you apart yet. I'm Charles Barry. Good to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Lived in Arlington for 30 years. Um, degree in architecture. I've been a builder for 40 years. And uh, I've always enjoyed the architectural fabric of Arlington. I think it's a real asset to the town. And I have got to the point in my life where I want to start giving back. And I feel I can contribute to that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, by elimination, I'm Michael Bush. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been an Arlington resident for about five years now. I was a uh, restoration carpenter until I was about 30 when my right wrist decided to give out on me. And these days I'm an optical engineer, but uh, I own a grand old wreck up on uh, Mount Gilboa. And my various neighbors have suggested that I should do this, and it struck my fancy. And so I have. Thank you. Comments, questions? Uh, Thank you. Uh, move moment. approval, and, and I just would say to um, to Charles, um, both Charles and um, is it Michael, David? No, Michael. Michael. No, Michael. Charles oh. and Michael. I'm thrilled that you have a background in, in carpentry and rest restoration, um, regardless of <laughs> how much you can do, as well as. Um, I know Michael's here. It's not a conflict or anything, but you are an alma mater of the chairman's uh, college of choice. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Right. But I'm, I'm so impressed that the fact that not only have you bought in Arlington, that you bought a historic home, everything that comes with it, you fulfill the requirements for the, um, and I always get this wrong, historic district commissions, but that, as you say, you're, you're willing to not only do that, but as you've cited from the microphone, do it not only for yourself, but for your neighbors, which includes the town of Arlington. And I'm eternally grateful for that because I have uh, several friends who live in historic homes, and it is a big commitment. And I really say hats off to both of you for doing this, and thank you. Okay. Uh, second? Second. 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 Uh, so thank you again. Uh, volunteers make this town run, and we get, as selectmen, we get to see a parade of them, and we get to say hello, and then you, know, you go and do great things, and we really appreciate it. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're all set. All right. So next up, it is after 7.15, we have public hearings on licenses and permits. So we have, um, just to review for those of pe for people who have just joined us or people at home or whatever, uh, we introduced new licenses, uh, a new licensing system here in Arlington. And at the time, we also uh, put a limit on the number of licenses that can be given out. And so we started the year with some 20 odd that were renewed from previous years. And then we've had a number of requests. And we're at the point where we have two licenses left. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven requests here today. I believe that one of them isn't actually here today, so probably going to be six. But we only have two licenses to give out um, regardless. So obviously, for the person who's not here, we would have the option of tabling. We have the option of giving none out. Um, I would, if the board <coughs> so chooses, I would suggest that we hear and, and ask from each individual, and then we entertain any motions that we see fit. And I'm also, since it's a public hearing, I'm going to invite everybody. All, I mean, all, we're going to go through all the licenses. I'm going to ask for input from the public if anyone has anything they want to say, and then we'll do our motions and, and comments. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. So first up, Ang Jambu Sherpa doing business as Everest Transportation. Uh, you are up first. Are you here? Could you come on up to the microphone? So we've all got your uh, application, and I think we've all had probably had a chance to check it out. Could, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your experience and why you're looking to? Thank you for wanting to be in Arlington. Tell us why you're you were looking for Arlington. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> I started in the cab business in the the water town first. So I started in 2007. So I drive down in that town for two years. Then I work in the, the Boston city for three years. And right now I'm working with the, the delivery, with the Uber transportation. But uh, this is a very great opportunity. So that's why I fill up the application for the, the taxi medallion. Questions? Mr. Mahan. Oh, does oh, Mr. Sorry. Byrne have your hands up oh, first? Did you get that first? Mr. Oh, Byrne. It doesn't matter. But, um, sorry. I, yeah, you are. Um, 
You just mentioned you're working for Uber. Yes. Is that going to be, if so, if I go on my app and I say I want an Uber cab in Arlington, would you then come and pick me up here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but once I get on the taxi, that's going to be separate, different, you know, business. So I will probably, you know, better to have the, you know, the, the taxi medallion from the town. Okay. So the cab you'll be driving in Arlington will still right. be going through Uber. Right. Okay. N uh, no, I will not attach with the Uber, so that's going to be totally different. But right now, just for like my reference, like I'm working with the Uber, but if I got the metal in on the, you know, the, uh, from the taxi, then I'll just do the regular taxi business. Okay, so there will be no Uber at that There time. will be no Uber. Okay. We are outside of Uber's range. Right. Okay. Yeah, if you go to the Uber <laughs> map, they don't go to our own yeah. Maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Mohan. Um, for all the applicants, um, I believe with the exception of number seven, who already is has some hackney licenses in Arlington, um, I want to pose the same questions. First and foremost, um, I'm concerned about your, f your familiarity, your knowledge of the different streets in Arlington, how to get from point A and point B. Right. And the other thing, on your particular application, and you'll hear, I'm going to do this with several others, but not all, um, for your uh, location of your proposed depot, you have five Old Colony Avenue. We don't have Old Colony Avenue. Right. We do have Old Co Colony Lane and Old right. Colony Road. Right. So what is your correct address if you were Old successful? Old Colony Lane. So that's... So that's... that's oh, change that to Old right. Colony Lane. Right. Okay. Uh, and I'm just curious about where you're mostly driving out of Woburn. In Arlington, you could probably put a lot of Arlingtonians on certain streets and they wouldn't know where they were. How are you going to be familiar? How are you going to know where you are in Arlington to get to another point? I understand you know how to get to Cambridge, Boston. Yeah, but just uh, if I got it, you know, I will go through the Atlas map and then I will just find it out. It's, it's, it's not a big deal for me to, you know, find it. You would go to the what? I'll just check, check on the, you know, uh, on the Atlas map and then, you know, the once I start, then it's not going to hard for me to find out. But, uh, I, I, Atlas. Oh, Atlas. 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 I'm sorry. You know what? I'm, I'm deaf in this area. No, no, I'm no, sorry. That is when I have a little bit of problem. So. Okay. So you would rely... So I, I, I'm very good with the, about the Atlas map. So. Okay. And Atlas the other... An institute guide map, you know, book. Okay. The other question I have, unless this is... Um, he's already received this um, insurance information. They don't have to have the insurance until after they get the license. They don't have to submit it to us before... Are you familiar with your insurance liability and what I'm concerned, what I'm interested in, right. what I'd like to know okay. is um, bodily injury, collision, and property? Right. Uh, I have a liability for $1 million, uh, but those kind of burglaries, maybe if I, you know, the selected, maybe I'll go through the insurance. So whatever required from the town, I'll, I'll go through that requirement. Okay. And the reason I bring this up, it's not just for you, it's for everybody else who's here. Um, the chairman is working, um, I believe, with the town manager on different um, areas of the Hackney licenses, and one of them is, as has been identified by the City of Boston, looking at appropriate insurance coverage. Right. So it's not, it, you know, it, it's basically the requirement we have now, I think Absolutely. we need more, but that's a concern for me. So thank you very much. Mr. Carroll. Okay, thank you. Um, I also had noticed the old colony, old colony lane, five old colony lane, and I noticed that one of our other applicants uh, also is proposing yeah. the depot there. Are you? Yeah, we are essentially just kind of, working. We are just kind of friend, you know. So, so okay. I'm planning to move on that at day. So I just use that for you know, like my you know the name also. Right now I'm not living there, but I'm planning to move on that building. So that's why I put it that as a you know reference. So in my friend's permission, so. Okay, so your your friend actually has sufficient parking spaces for both your cab and and his, it, you know, pending your move. It, uh, it, it is a you know, in and out, yeah. but for the um, if I got a you know the I am planning to apply for the you know the apartment there. Yeah. So that is why I put it that address, you know. But if I select it, just I can find out the parking, you know. So I I might you know pay for a monthly parking. So I can do that things. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I just yep. follow up on that? That's a question. Maybe I don't know if the town manager or town council. Um, 
both number, as Mr. Kiro, as Joe cited, this application and number six cite an apartment on Old Colony Lane. Uh, legally, can we give them permission to have that be a Hackney Depot? Well, um, <clears throat> you're not, um, I mean, if it would be a zoning violation, I don't know, that would be a separate issue. Under the old rules and regulations, there was a requirement that the cabs actually be kept in Arlington, and this board voted to eliminate that requirement. So they don't have to be kept in Arlington anymore. And if this board approved the license, that wouldn't operate as a special permit or any kind of override of the zoning bylaws. So there'd have to be a separate inquiry made to the building department. Okay, I guess that. Oh, Mr. Kiro. Has a would, would a change of the depot location require the uh, Hackney operator to come back to us, or if they were to change their depot location? In, in my follow-up, say it doesn't work out with uh, the yeah. department. You know, the, I have a one request. Like, if it doesn't work out in the, I have my own parking in my residence right now, so I can park there until I find the, you know, the location around here in the Marlington. Is that where you keep the car now, or do you keep it somewhere else? Right now, I'm keeping the car with my the where I'm living in Rivia. Uh, so Rivia. for the parking, I don't have any problem. I have a two parking there. So, but I was just trying to put the you know the you know address over here. Then when I switch with my partner, the shift maybe so he can also yeah. easy for the you know other partner. So that is the reason. Uh, so I had one comment, and that was about the color schema insignia. So uh, it's. It's important, and I think we need to improve our application to make the question more clear. But one of the things that's important is that uh, when someone gets a cab, they know which company they're, they're talking to, right. because that way they can talk about whether the service was good, or, you know, or, they can, or, or bad, or whatever it is. And so simply having a white car with a name on it isn't right. sufficient. It actually has to have an insignia on it. Right. And so if we choose uh, at some point to make a vote on this one, uh, I'm going to ask that whoever makes the motion uh, note that in their motion that we have to have a more clear insignia before uh, we actually uh, uh, th this description isn't sufficient to approve the license at least right. in, in my opinion okay so okay. I'm that color you know the car the white color you you know the mandatory right the white color of the car is fine right yeah it's, yeah. The, it's the what's going to be on the door that yeah. matters that is fine because even in the Boston they they require the white you know the cab because it's visibility things yeah so if I've selected you know I have a car the black now but I can paint it and I can make it yeah. white. It's not a big deal. Or I can buy the another white car. Okay. So. Yeah. So what I'm the point I'm making right now is in the color of the cab. Right. It's what's on the door. Right. What's on the door? Okay. Okay. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Our next up is uh, Anant Dungel. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Wow. I got lucky. Uh, doing business as Sunshine Transportation. Yes. Good up. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Anand Tungel. I've been um, doing this uh, cab business for five years, drove the Boston cab, and have uh, pretty good knowledge of Boston. And uh, Arlington, too, I used to live uh, for a while for with the friends, not, uh, and uh, I'm moving to Arlington next month, well, which, is, which comes with the two parking, too. And I have my own car, which is all paid. And, um, um, and uh, if you get a, t get a chance, I'm happy to serve to Arlington. What, town, what part of town are you moving to? Uh, Gardner Street, 180 Gardner Street. Welcome. And, uh, yeah, from the next month, yeah. Questions? I hate to be here. Uh, yeah, I, get, I mean, I... Do you want to go first? Because maybe you might ask some of my questions. Right. I don't want to be... Um, so my first question is, so you're currently working, so you're running, driving your own car and you're working for Uber? Or, yes, uh, yes, sir. Okay. And so would becoming a cabbie in Arlington, would you continue to work with Uber or that It has, a, we are that just a partner. I have nothing to do with it. If I get a the chance to do that over here, I can just quit over there and start the change my car all around and make a cab. But that's what your intent would be, would be to yes, stop working? Yes, that's what I intend to do. Okay. Um, and you heard, uh, so I t told the previous gentleman that the description about um, the color scheme and in insignia, that it's very important that we have a clear insignia on the, on the, on the door so that people can know which cab that they're purchasing from. So, so you, you don't have this one specified, so I'm just saying that if we approve this license as a, par as a term of that license, you're going to have to specify one. Exactly. The reason I uh, didn't, didn't specify it, yeah. I wasn't sure what kind of radio service they have here. 
Yeah. If I get the radio service, they might have their uh, fleet and I have to, you know, go with them. That's why I didn't specify. If I have to go alone, I'll, I'll do the appropriate coloring. And if they have their own color, like uh, any cap company, I, yeah. I, I will change the color with that thing too. And uh, So there is no single dispatch service in Arlington. There is a dispatch that covers the, the number of the companies used, but not all of them do. Some of them, and if you choose, if you, you know, you, we'd still expect you to be your own brand. If you're working with a different radio, you could work with a different radio with service, but if you're actually going to become like, you know, part of that company, you're not, you wouldn't be applying as yourself anymore. You'd be applying as part so, of them. So if that's the case, I'll do everything for myself. I will start over and uh, I'll put the uh, right color, what color you, you to approve from the kind of, I put the phone number, business phone number, whatever comes. Okay. Um, other questions? Sorry, I didn't get to what you wanted. Mrs. Mahoney. No, no. Um, again, the question of, um, because some people have said to me in many cities and towns, not just Arlington, they get a taxi cab and they feel the ride was longer and the fare was, was more because the driver was not aware of the streets and roads. So what I would like to ask you, since you're coming from Saugus right now, um, how would you be able to provide the best service uh, picking up and dropping off in Arlington, say Lennon, Ro Lennon Road, and I want to go to Sutherland? Well, well, I, I can't tell you the detail now, but, but there are a lot of, uh, you know, apps and the GPS with, with Occupy. My car is Occupy, you know, it, it comes with the GPS, so I wouldn't be any hard to do that. Like if going to the airport and the coming to the, uh, coming to the ship, the, to the Arlington, it's a uh, pretty easy to, we have, we have been doing like, I mean, I, even I worked at the Boston Cap, I, I dropped the people here and to take the people from here too. So when they go, got the car. So you would have a dedicated app and GPS? Yeah, we, we do have a GPS system. In the I know you have it, but would, would it be dedicated to this? Yes, yeah, yeah. <coughs> it will be separate GPS system. I okay. And then the other question I have, just because you said at the microphone, you're planning on moving to Gardner Street. You said 180 and your application says 186. So the, those are the same company because I, I applied for the 186 and she said it's going to be the, you know, it's going to be 180. So it, it, it's the same company because uh, it, uh, they had uh, two apart apartments available there, but, uh, but now I end up on a 180, I think, yes. Now 180, okay. Yeah. But I, I, can, I can give you the proof that I'm moving and uh, I, I, I can get the thing from the rental office. Are you moving to, just because I grew up in the projects, which is now called Monotomy Manor, and I lived on Gardner Street in Freeman, Freeman. 186, are you moving to the housing authority apartments i'm pretty sure that's i i wasn't sure i i i i have nothing to do with the housing i just applied it they approved it so i'm not getting any benefit from them from the housing or anything i guess my question to the town manager or town council would be i'm pretty confident having lived on let me see when i lived on gardner street i lived on 203a and that was housing authority um, and unless 186 is a private residence, but I don't think it is. Are we allowed as a board of selectmen to let the housing authority apartments be listed as a uh, depot location for a Hackney license? Well, it, it wouldn't, anything this board would vote in terms of issuing a license would not grant or restrict any right that the applicant may have to park a vehicle at his residence. So if he's allowed to park a taxi cab at his residence and his residence is housing authority property, then this wouldn't change that. If he's not allowed to, then this wouldn't change that either. He would have to work that out separately. We, we would have to investigate that and only because living on Gardner Memorial in um, Fremont, uh, it, I know then, and it may have changed, the parking restrictions were very, um, in terms of commercial vehicles and other things. Um, so I would just say on this one, along with the chairman's suggestion regarding subject to more clear insignia, um, that we also have it subject to on this particular one, um, that it is an approved parking use by the Arlington Housing Authority. Okay. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Um, you note in your application that you maintain the highest customer satisfaction rating with the Uber technology clients. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Is that 
published somewhere? Are you uh, given rankings as uh, Yeah, uh, like uh, working for Uber, they have a, like a rating system. Uh, we have to maintain the certain rating 4.5 to 4.5 to 5 star rating. So I've been always above the 5 rating that are dealing with the customer and explaining where they want to go and how comfortable they fit in the car when they get, get the people in the car. So that's what I was talking about. And, that, and how is that collected? Is that based on so, surveys after? Oh, you um, know this. I, like after you take a ride in an Uber cab, you rate the driver and the service that you get. Oh, okay. So that's how that's based off of. Excuse my ignorance. No, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Further questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Right. Next up, uh, Goyabel Jolie. All right. I got, I, th I am not seeing anyone. I was expecting someone to be absent, but I wasn't sure who it was, so I think okay. that's who it probably is. Uh, Sharad Aryal. Welcome, come on up. Thank you for coming. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am one of the residents in Arlington uh, since October 2010. And I'm doing the cab business. I mean, I lease Medellin from someone. And I do run the cab business in Boston. Uh, I have hired some people, two people, for the first morning shift and the night shift. I'm 60 years old, so I went to work until my last breathing. And uh, one most important thing I, I would like to comment in front of you guys. Uh, there are maybe so many people older than me who may be interested to go to the church or temple. If you give me an opportunity to work for the Arlington and the residents of the Arlington, uh, I will provide 8 to 12, Saturday or Sunday. Any days, 8 to 12 will be free ride from their home to the Arlington Church. That is my proposal to the city. And the rest, you have my paper. Okay. Whatever is your choice. And so that was, you're, say, you're suggesting free ride from 8 to 12 on Saturday and Sunday? From Arlington residents to the Arlington Church, not okay. beyond the Arlington city. All right. Arlington Church? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, from, Arl from Arlington what? Business to Arlington Church? Residents of the... Residents to Arlington yes. Church? To the church in Arlington. Church. Church. Got it. So okay. I'm, I'm... I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. My tongue is wrong. All right. And I do have to tell you, we're a town, not a city. Do you know the difference? Town, not a city. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. Just, to, just so you know, it'll, yeah. Um, and, uh, um, pardon me, I'll just, I'm going to add a question. So, uh, so do you run your own cab company in Boston or do you work for somebody else? I work for somebody else. Okay. I lease the medallion and I work for them. Okay. Uh, other, qu other questions? <clears throat> Mrs. Mon. Just to be fair, because I've asked everybody else Please. sort of the same questions. Um, in terms of, I, I will say that I'm a little concerned that you and um, the previous applicant number three have the same address, just as a court reporter that, and I, and I understand what was said, but um, on my universal question, in terms of being new to Arlington, how will you, I'm thinking of people who feel like, oh, I got a taxi cab driver that really didn't know his or her way. Um, how are you going to pick somebody up on 3rd Avenue in Arlington and bring them down to Brooks Avenue? The first thing, I'm not 100% aware of everything. I know something and somewhere. And the rest of which I don't know, I ask people to guide me. Okay. Okay. And then, um, did you finish? I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Okay. And then my, um, s not really question, because it's been pointed out by Mrs. Kropelka Marie, yes. um, you don't have to provide the insurance until you're granted the um, award. But one of my concerns has been that the chairman and others are going to address is that um, in terms of insurance to not only collision, auto, but also bodily injury. Um, what do you plan on, not committing yourself, but what do you plan on in terms of that issue? I would like to buy the full coverage insurance for me and for my guests. 
there, there will be four people in a cab generally. All should be secured. I will buy that kind of insurance. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Um, Barton. Thanks. Now, do you have GP, like a GPS navigation system? Yes, I do. And I, I would assume that every, every cab driver has a GPS navigation system, so maybe um, in you know, light of the question, if that's okay, if you could just state whether or not you have a GPS or navigation system when you get up here so um, we will know that you can get from point A to point B in an efficient manner. Uh, that goes for you and everyone. Um, and that's really the only point I wanted to make. Okay. Mr. Carroll? Well, I think the chair is going to note the yes, insignia. I, <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely was. And yeah. I'll note the insignia as well, and I think you've heard what our concerns yeah. expressed. So do you, I, I guess I, I'm going to come back to the insignia as well. So, uh, so the cab that you're driving for Boston, you lease. You said you lease it? Yeah. But this car that you described here, this is one that you own separately from that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and you heard um, me talk about the insignia yeah. to the previous applicants? Okay. All right. Any further questions? No. All right. Thank you very much. A good night, gentlemen. Yep. All right. Next up, Rick Trichello. Mr. Trichello has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve cars with us already. Is that correct? I think that's right. Thirteen. All right. <laughs> Would you like a chair? Would that be more comfortable? Yeah, can we adjust this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do, uh, do you mind grab, just grab one of those empty chairs if you don't mind? Thank you. And then that mic... And then that mic points down really very... Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can have a seat. <coughs> You tell me about surgery. I don't want to keep you on your feet. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Surgery on my legs. Getting over there. We're, we're recovering. Good. He's, uh, Rick's got uh, a roller cup surgery, so we're we're both handicapped, but we're doing the job. <laughs> so between the two of you, you're one whole person. Good. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, the honorable board. Good evening, um, town manager, town attorney, and secretary. Uh, we are requesting an additional license to service the Arlington COA and special needs transportation for in-town SPED. Um, we've had <clears throat> situations over the winter when demand for an additional unit has been necessary. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I would like to address the Honorable Board about the most recent taxi permits that have been issued. It will only take a moment. We have put together some history on the licenses from the past. We would like to submit that information to all selectmen for their review. It may clear up a lot of issues that are at hand. Um, it will only be a few minutes of reading, and we would like to submit a copy to the town manager, the town attorney, and the secretary's office, if, if, I, if I may. You can submit anything. We'd be delighted to read it. Thank you. So is this what you're about to read, or is this something no, separate? No, something we'd like you to read. Okay. I'm assuming after the meeting, yes. then. We'll do. Well, you can read during the meeting. Well, well I can only pay attention or read. I can't do oh. both. applicants we are asking that the board be on a fair and level playing field with those new issues we are requesting and suggesting that the board check new applicants registrations registration dates articles of incorporation insurance certificates and dates of insurance including name of insurance company etc there's only two insurance companies that write taxis in the Commonwealth. 
um, as well as vehicle meter and equipment inspections. We are in accordance with all the above mentioned. We additionally are requesting that the new applicants have signed a tax attestation form individually or corporately. That their drivers all have been approved by Hackney at the Arlington Police Department as specified in the rules and regulations and given a driver's Hackney license. Our drivers are all English speaking and are quarried. Vested interest. We have a physical office that includes payroll and staff, a two way licensed FCC radio for instant communication, multiple telephone systems, and multiple telephone lines, computers and fax machines for communication. We are currently developing and upgrading our, our company handbook, setting the minimum standards for the drivers, which includes public safety, with the emphasis on driver and passenger safety, accidents and radio procedures. Our staff must adhere to cleanliness, vehicle inspection of damages, schedule maintenance, etc. We have a non-smoking policy that all must adhere to, and our drivers know this town like the back of their hand. They know the front doors, the back doors, the alleyways, the sideway doors, because they have been residents here for the last 25 years, 80% of them. Our intentions in the past, as well for the future, are to maintain our current standards. We have an obligation to the town of Arlington with no exception. We would hope that the new applicants have the same intentions. We feel that the town is, has a fiduciary responsibility to the community and its taxis, as we have a, a fiduciary responsibility to the town and the community. Our taxis are for the town and its people. We do not own them, we run them for the town. And we have in the past. Although we encourage competition, and after 35 years of service and without infraction, please bear in mind that we are servicing the residents of this town and public safety and convenience are at, at hand and are our, our number one priority. Finally, regulation. Taxi rate structure and recent complaints. We need regulation regarding pricing, etc. The current regulation is unclear. As published in the newspaper after last April's meeting, it was suggested that the rates be increased from 320 to 380 with a ceiling of $4 a mile. Because of the rate confusion, and as a result, we have not raised our rates since that meeting of last April. And we have remained at $3.20 per mile. However, we've had complaints of overcharges from other, from other carriers and the ridership due to the overcharging, in the, especially in the last couple of weeks. Nothing we cannot deal with. Um, I would like to, res uh, oh, <clears throat> on the overcharging, and if the board would like to reschedule to discuss those issues, we will make ourselves available. We will, however, apply the new rate of $3.80 as a maximum that was approved as of last April 2012. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank if you, you. You know, what I put in front of you, this is only two to three minutes of reading, and if, if you need me to respond to that, I'd be more than glad to. Okay. So I did just thank you. I did want a couple of the comments you made earlier about uh, the quarry and the meters yes. and the insurance. We do require those for all licenses to be issued. Uh, there was one that you mentioned, the tax attestation. That one I don't believe is a member of our, a part of our current requirements, but those other items you discussed, they all sounded like a laundry list of items that must be in our office before the license is issued. Yes. So I, we, we agree. Yes. Okay. And the other thing is, if you get complaints about other carriers, I definitely encourage you to forward them along to uh, the police department and our office because uh, you know, we, we need that feedback. We collect the feedback already from the public, and you know, if you have additional information you want to pass, that's useful to we, us. We have done that already, Mr. Chairman. Excellent, thank you. I, thank you, glad to hear it. Uh, questions? Um, Diane. <laughs> I just want to say, in terms of the insurance, I've, I've seen it before, so I'm satisfied with that. In terms of my question regarding knowledge of Arlington Roads and 
lanes and streets and abs uh, I'm comfortable with that I do want to let my colleagues know and the, and the applicants that um, I was besides the um, services that you provide the Council on Aging on yes. aging yes um, which is part of the fleet that he has right now and as a result of the livery changes where you lost some of your livery licenses because we, we don't do those anymore you have to do it mass court that has affected you um, I did receive a call and I think as my colleagues are aware I'm somewhat more knowledgeable in terms of the special needs students and the lab collaborative and the likewise and um, I know mr. Kiro is also aware of this but uh, Rick Ionelli who is, and I'm probably going to get his title wrong, and Joe, you can correct me, but he's the supervisor of transportation for, for the school system. Um, he called and said that, that there has been a great need. Um, they do call upon th this company quite a bit, um, and they fulfill the requests as much as they can along with the Council on Aging, but he wanted to um, put his recommendation in that, um, I think it's called under the 7D, 7D, um, student transportation it falls under that that um, he really was requesting if possible he understands there's only two left we may give out none we may give out one we may give out both but that this is besides the um, common um, service that's being presented at the microphone in terms of transporting um, Arlington residents and one gentleman said Saturday and Sunday residents to church that um, there was a school official who is in charge of this who said if there's any way um, it would help him um, in that capacity. I, I actually have a question on that. Are you under contract with the public schools or? Yes. Are you, you are? Yes. And they're all Corey checked through the school. I mean, I know that through your company, but I know they also have to do it through, through the schools as well as they have to comply and they do with lab collaborative. Well, um, I, need, I need to be a little clear if I may in, in, uh, interject for two no. seconds. You know at the police department, um, when we send somebody up, we send them a letter of introduction. Mm -hmm. Police department then tells us, as, I, as I've mentioned here before, that um, Tom Sullivan, good name, Tom Sullivan has a very uh, bad driving record, and we are, rec we are recommending to you that he does, or he will not be driving in this community. Yeah. They will not tell us why. Mm -hmm. So they more or less dictate who's going to drive and who's not going to drive. Um, insofar as the regulation regarding uh, you know these these prices and rates I mean that's th that's always going to go on but um, it's been really bad in the last two or three weeks you know we have uh, we have a major overhead I'm sorry I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the you, with the board questions for now is it sure okay. sure all right further questions uh, I apologize but I did want you now that's okay thoughts? mr. chairman yeah. I mean, I understand there's an awful lot to digest here, and uh, I applaud um, Juliana. She's uh, worked very, very hard on this. I think, I'm hoping what I have given you kind of summarizes what's really gone on here for many, many years, and I hope that um, it's digested, but digested properly. We, we, have, we have a vested interest, and we need to know. My, my guys are saying to me now, well, Rick, uh, uh, telling my son Ricky Ricky what should we do just to counsel on aging at discount we've we've lost a lot of our work and um, it's it's kind of unfair thank you thank you thank you I'm sorry my question yeah so on the uh, one of the second to last page where you have the driver list the people that drive you I believe there are 14 currently yes. on the list yes now so are, is that just an anticipation of receiving the 14th? Those guys license? are behind the wheel. They work either days, nights, or weekends. Okay. You, and they're you current. You have more than one person. No, that may, no I understand. Okay. It was just, okay. Thanks. Yeah, you can't. Uh, I, I, I really have to be clear about this with, with the town and the community. And in, in any town, not a city, in any town, the town needs to come to somebody that they can go to to keep their eyes on what's what's going on hmm. we have worked very hard throughout the years to do that if a sergeant late calls us we need to know this right here and now we know everything is recorded every call not just once but three times here in our office on the driver's way bill and then on the on the daily and weekly summary we have records we keep records 
um, and it's bailed this town out on, on a few occasions. I don't need to go into that right now, but every community needs someone that they can go to, somebody that they can trust. And um, I feel as though I'm not any better than anybody, but there isn't any, anybody in this business any better than I. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right, next up we have uh, Maftu Yusuf. Welcome, thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, you can tilt that back up. Yeah, hello. So tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what brings you here. Yeah, hello, yes, my name is Moftu Yusuf. I've been driving five years, two years in Cambridge, and also three years in Boston. Okay. Yeah. And so you're driving now in Boston? Yeah. And so, do you own your own car, or are you working for somebody no, else? No, no, I, I work for somebody else, yeah. Okay. Questions? Ms. Mahan, you're up. I guess it, just yeah. what I've asked the oh, previous sure. applicants in terms of your knowledge of the town of Arlington um, and how you would provide the best service in terms of getting from point A to point B, uh, but where you haven't driven in Arlington, you've driven in Cambridge and Boston. I understand you can pick someone up in Arlington yeah. and go to the airport, but I'm asking you about. Yeah, I mean, I know some area, just mid time, most of the streets you cannot memorize in your mind. Just we, I use the GPS system. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then the other question would be, um, I'm sure you've heard the discussion about insurance. Yeah terms of collision, auto, and bodily injury. Um, if you are successful, what type of insurance will you um, obtain, uh, get? I mean, uh, depending on the assurance, what type of the assurance they have. Like most of the taxi, uh, they do, I think, liability insurance or? Do you know what the limits you're looking for are? No, you have to get liability insurance, but you can pick the old level, different level. levels. Yeah, uh, you can pick one thing, three things, five things. So I'm interested in collision, which which is really collision and property damage, um, auto, which is your car, and bodily injury. Which yeah, I, I th yeah, I, I want to do three of them: body injury and uh, auto. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Mr. Carroll. Oh. Uh, th thank you, okay. uh, sir. Um, now, you share an address with another applicant uh, also here. Um, are, you, are you working in conjunction or applying in conjunction with another applicant? No. That your address, I, I see the, uh, your address, the proposed depot location are the same as the next person we're depot? hearing from. No, I don't know. 364 Rinja. Correct. Yeah. I, I just noticed that the next the next applicant who is coming up is also at 364 Rinja. So oh yeah, difference. Yeah, difference. Two two difference. You're, you're not applying together. No. Okay. So how do you are you working together? Are you friends or like how is it the? Okay. You just can you explain the connection? Which means the next application? Mr. Nagash. Mr. Nagash is a different Nagash. person. Yeah, he's here. And so are you working? Are you friends? Are you work, live to, working together? Are you run a business together or what? We know each other, yeah. We're working to, uh, together, yeah. Okay. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yeah. They, they appear to identify two separate apartments on that address. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I, I actually had to right? go there. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. So uh, further questions? Oh, oh we, I'm, I'm oh, not sure. done yet. Sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. What, Mr. Brown. Uh, what type of car will you be driving? Um. What type of car will you be driving in Arlington? Yeah, I mean, I, I request maybe van, I say. A van? Yeah, yeah. And you understand that what the chairman's asking for, that we've asked the other applicants to put, you know, an insignia on it? Well, what do you mean? Uh, like on the door, like uh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sign, you understand yeah. That? Telephone number and sign, yeah. Yeah. It, it does have to be more than a sign. It has to be distinctive so that people know who you are. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so uh, on your application, you didn't fill out an email address. Do you not use email or? 
Uh, I use, yeah, sometime, uh, yeah, most, uh, yeah. Uh, can okay. I, can sure. You, yeah, so, uh, okay. could you follow up and pass that along to uh, the Marie from our office? Because it, sure. it, yeah, it's not, we, okay. we, we missed that on there. Okay. Further questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you so much. Next up, uh, Shams Shamsu Nagash. Nagash. Welcome, thank you. Thank you for coming. Can you tell us about your application? Yeah, uh, my name is Shamsu Nagash. I've been working for almost for 10 years in Boston. I'm driving for 10 years. And just, uh, I went to to drive in Arlington now. So I'm curious, so if you've been driving, uh, I guess I, I could ask some of, these, uh, some of our other applicants that I never just, it never occurred to me until now. So you've been driving in Boston for 10 years, but now you want to work in Arlington. What is it that made you, what makes you want to make that change? Yeah, the change is uh, in Boston is now, I'm, I'm just working with somebody, just I want to own my business and to try myself. Questions? Ms. Mahan? Just the same two questions. Okay. Um, where you're, you have been driving in Boston for, I think you said, 10 years, um, driving in Arlington. Um, I want you to tell us um, how you will be able to give the best service in terms of getting people from one point in Arlington, a place in the Heights, to another point in Arlington, a place down Calwin Manor. How, how will you get from point A to point B? Yeah, that's it. The first thing is, yeah, I know the, the areas sometimes, and if you don't know, just I have to use a, a street guide and GPS. Street guide and, and GPS. Okay. And then um, the other question is, it's not required right now, but if you are approved, what are your plans in terms of your insurance liability coverage? Yeah, that, that's uh, the best one. I want to use the best uh, that's the cover of mine and uh, my customer and body injury, everything. Okay, so um, it, it, it's, I can't right now. Um, what I can require you to do and the rest of the board is what we have currently on our application. But my question, what I think I'm hearing you say is collision, property value, auto, and bodily injury. Sure, yes. Okay. Questions, Mr. Carroll? Uh, yeah, I just asked the question that was asked of the previous applicant. Um, uh, do you own your vehicle now? No. You do not? No. Do you, do you know what you would be looking at for a vehicle? Yeah, just a uh, uh, the sedan car. Sedan? Yeah. Sedan. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I have talked to uh, the, uh, the previous applicants about the importance of having a uh, design on the door. Did you hear the, my question about that, or my statement about the, putting the insignia on the cab door? So in the, the previous conversations, the previous uh, people have come up, I've talked about how the pass, the do, on the door there has to be something that makes you distinctive so that people know who you are. Yeah, I, I have to, yeah, sure. Okay. So do you have an idea what you would do? I'm curious, what, what design would you use? Do you know what design you'd want to put up? No, yet. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, further questions? No. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, so we have just heard an, uh, seven, I lost track already, six applications. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on any of the applicants? I'm not seeing anyone from the public. Motion or comments? Mrs. Mahan. Um, right now, uh, what I would like to do is and I'm not of the opinion to give out both licenses tonight but uh, you know and I'm not saying I'm going to be successful on the motion that I'm going to make but um, I f feel really strongly of approving request number seven from Almont Transportation Company um, where I recognize they already have 13 and this would be 14 but they lost two and a half. Not, not Almont. Arlington. Oh what did I say? I'm sorry. Is it number seven Almont? Yeah they're doing, they're doing business as, as Almont. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So the request for um, from Louis Trichello, Trichello, DBA, Almont Transportation Company for one, where um, I have heard requests from various agencies in the town as well as the school 
um, and there is a need there and it is fulfilled as well as the explanation of um, his business and how he operates in, in, um, in conjunction with the town of Arlington as well as the Arlington Public Schools. So I'd like to move approval on the request number seven from DBA Almond Transportation Company. Is there a second? Not yet. No. All right. Um, I think it's going to fail for the moment. If you could just withdraw it just for a second, so I could suggest another way. Uh, yeah. a way. I, just I'm sure the chair has thought yeah. this through, but I have not. So okay. I was I was wondering if it might not be in order. You know, in, in some other situations where we've had a very limited number of licenses to give out and a, and a lot of applicants. We've gone through and taken a straw poll of the members of the top two choices, and I don't know if that makes sense in this situation or not. I'm I'm open to it. Is that the, uh, I think you or one if you can, if you don't I'm feel fine that if you, you want to do top two. The only reason, just because they are businessmen, and you know, I have no problem saying no. But my it's incidentally, they're in one. My they're in my top two. Of, Right. So, yeah. if you, I would, I would yield to Mr. Carroll if you, okay. however you want to handle that. Would, I think yeah. that makes sense, seeing as I okay. get a second. Okay. Just as we might have a sense, right. it might That's be fine. able to yeah. roll in the motion. So. Um, Mr. Carroll, since suggesting it, yeah, you go first. Spot. I go last. <laughs> or I go second to last. <laughs> my, um, I, my top two, if we were to grant both licenses this evening, would be uh, Arlmont uh, Transportation as well as uh, SNS uh, Transportation. What number is that? That's six. six. Okay. Steve, are you prepared to make a straw? Um, yes, I. Um, I my top two would also be Arlington Transportation and uh, Sunshine Sunshine Transportation. I, um, you know, I like that he um, that. He kept a high rating with uh, Uber, which I know is not, you know, always an easy thing to do. I um, I really appreciate that experience, and I think that would translate to a successful, um, you know, cab business in Arlington. Where, and if yeah, I've never been in an Uber cab, I've um, you know they do are very well kept, um, and they I do believe that they provide an excellent service, and uh, that's why I'll be supporting him. Okay, can I just get so you're He's seven and in in four? He was okay, and the and Mr. Carroll was was it six and four? Uh, no, seven and six. Six yeah. and seven. Six and seven. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with seven for the reasons, and I am going to go with Mr. I'm going to agree with Mr. Byrne on seven and four. Seven and four. And Mrs. Mahan, you certainly clearly signaled seven. Um, did, I did signal seven. Um, some of the applications I was concerned with addresses mm -hmm. and also with the, um, I have heard from some people and I, I stood on Howard Street my mm -hmm. neighbors across the street um, I don't want to say their names but mm -hmm. if I have to I would um, I saw a cab go up and down Robbins Road forever and it was one of the newly licensed so I'm going to keep an eye on that but um, so I was prepared just for seven however I am willing to support um, in light of my mm -hmm. colleagues' um, comments, the Sunshine um, application with the uh, subject to, first, as the chairman has pointed out, actually, yeah. who wants to make the motion? So, I yeah, don't so, want to. So I think what we'll do, so hearing what we've got is, let's, we've got one that we, was pretty clear. We've got one with two votes. Let's, and I would suggest that we'll entertain a motion and see if it, it's yep. still, in my mind, as possible. We'll under, it, it depend, we could end up 2-2 yep. and then we see where we go. All right, but let's start with number one. So, Mrs. Mahan, why don't you make your motion again um, regarding number seven? First, I'd like to move approval of a request number seven, Louis Truchello, DBA, Almond Transportation Company, subject to um, a more clear insignia designation to the Board of Selectmen. And all, all conditions. And all conditions contained therein. We have a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion on this one? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, so we just awarded a license to Almont Transportation. Um, Mr. Byrne. I, um, excuse me, I um, move approval of um, the awarding of one Hackney license to Sunshine Transportation, uh, Annette Dungo. 
um, subject to all conditions. And specifically the conditions, conditions of, of the insignia, the, insignia. the parking, yes. the depot parking. The parking depot, yes. Ms. And, and could I add a friendly amendment to that, uh, also subject to that it complies with, uh, if this is an Arlington Housing Authority yeah. apartment. Uh, yeah, I think his depot, the de I think the depot parking being approved or per permittable is covers what you're looking for. Yeah. Is, am I correct? Or the Having lived there, unless the rules have changed. So could, could we just make sure, I don't want yeah. to grant something and have the house, uh, I agree. housing so, authority. So, the mo yeah, so what part of the motion is that it be a also legal and permittable to. depot location? And if it's 180 or 186? Maybe Good 180 point. is a private residence yeah. and one, I know 186, I'm 99% yeah. sure is housing. Is there a second? A uh, second. Mr. Kerr. And I will join you in supporting this. I, I um, in the straw poll, um, I think that they would have been my third choice, but um, straw poll, I supported SNS primarily because the gentleman has been in the community for um, several years. I figured there's some familiarity with, with the community as a result of that. And um, I mean, I should have made that clear uh, as well as this offer of a, of a uh, public service. But uh, I do defer to, to my colleagues who have experience with. Um, the the other taxi network uh, with which um, the sunshine the sunshine operator has worked. Right. So I will support you. Uh, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's four zero. Okay. So now we have a, a number of licenses outstanding. We have the option of um, rejecting them, or we could table them indefinitely. And uh, one of the and, and I think that depending upon which we choose, it has an impact on their fees. The fee, the, like the application fee. So part of me says let's table them indefinitely. I was going to say, want to table them yeah. in light of the fact that you're working on some information, we'll, you're going to provide. Maybe we'll have one will become available and stuff right. like that. Move to yeah. table. Yeah. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Four zero to the table. All right. So we have made it through licenses and permits. Next up, uh, we scheduled for 7.30. Not that we really thought we'd be there at 7.30, <laughs> yeah. but uh, the revised CDBG requests for FY13 and 14. Town Manager Chapdelaine. So earlier this year, the board approved and forwarded the town meeting, which town meeting approved a preliminary budget for CDBG for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, that budget was based on a expected or projected 5% cut in CDBG funding. So several of the public service programs that uh, we cared very deeply about, uh, very deeply about were cut, uh, had their funding cut from what they were funded at last year. Uh, somewhat surprisingly, we received our funding allocation from HUD, and we actually received $119,000 more than we expected to receive. So we were able to make a decision to reallocate funds back. So the CDBG subcommittee made up of Chairman Dunn, Mr. Byrne, myself, Carol Kowalski, and Anna Witten met and discussed where to reallocate those funds. So the board has before them this revised budget. Uh, we were able to reallocate uh, more funds to the affordable housing program. Uh, their funding was increased by 28348 uh, Able to allocate more funds to the Arlington Home Improvement Loan Program. Their funding was also increased by 28348 If we look at public services, uh, what we did was anybody who was cut was brought back up to what their prior year budget amount was. And then uh, several other programs, including the Adult Day Health Scholarships, the AYCC, the Monotony Manor um, Homework Support Program, actually had their funding increased from the prior year's budget. Uh, so overall, uh, $17,000 was added back to public services. And then under Public Facilities and Improvements, we increased funding to the Boys and Girls Club locker room accessibility uh, request. It's a capital improvement. They had asked for 25,000. Uh, the prior budget had awarded them 15,000. We were able to give them the full 25. And the facade improvement program uh, had been funded at zero, and we were able to fund that at 15,000. And the final amount we were able to put back was under planning, uh, number one, under comprehensive master planning. We were able to increase that from 50,000 to 70,000 which will help with the master planning effort. This is Mahan. It may be that I had a long day, hmm. um, but I'm looking at what's before us, what's in my packet, and I just want to make sure I'm reading this right and 
maybe I'm not seeing it right. If we go to public facilities and employment and improvements, yep. Boys and Girls Club, I have town manager preliminary budget of 25000 yeah. and requested. Where do I see that it was zero? So are you just telling us that? Where yeah. am I missing that? Well, I, I'm sorry. I was telling you that. So, okay. Yeah. Th th that's what I'm saying. Okay. So, so, all right. So you're telling that us what that. So what is actually being awarded is requested or preliminary budget? The, the, the co column to the far right under town manager, board of selectmen, preliminary budget. That, that's, those are the new funding amounts that we're asking the board to adopt tonight. Okay. So like... Am I reading this correctly, that Housing Authority Life and Skills Center building is going from 400 to 100? No. No. So no. Is it the other way around? This is where I'm getting confused. So the I'm the sorry. Column, the column lit amount requested, that's how much all of these groups, agencies, programs requested several months ago. Okay. There was then an amount that was awarded or recommended several months after that, but a month or two ago when we thought we were going to get less. The column now under Town Manager Board of Selectmen, that is now the most up-to-date column of what we're recommending with the new funding amount that we expect. Okay, so the column I'm looking for, you're telling us from the microphones is what I'm saying. I don't, I'm, I'm just trying to, as you were saying that. And then um, the other question that I had was master planning. Is it at 70 or 50? 70. It's at 70. And do you know because I know we're limited on planning, um, what previously encompassed that 50, now 70,000? Like what, has that always been a planning? Um, yeah. Consultant study group or? No, what, uh, what I would say is in past years, more of the planning staff has been funded by CDBG. Okay. However, HUD in recent years, really in the past three fiscal years, has started to urge the town to push full-time planning staff off of CDBG onto the town budget, and we've done that. That, however, has freed up planning money that can be spent on planning or administration. There's a cap on planning and, administ uh, planning and administration of 20% of the total allocation. Mm -hmm. So moving money onto the general fund for those staff positions has freed up master planning money. When their master plan is done, there will be some planning funds available to be reallocated in a different manner. Last two questions. And I apologize to my colleagues. Um, under administration, um, the audit costs, that's an audit specifically to CDBG. Is that HUD or is that Powers and Sullivan? Powers and Sullivan performs it on our CDBG program. And am I reading it correctly that we're not allocating any money for legal services? You're, that, that's correct. So if, if the need arises, and I'm not saying it for myself personally, but for legal services, whether it's affordable housing or the like, um, how do you anticipate funding that? Uh, if there if there was a need that arose in terms of legal services, we could have a discussion about reallocating some unallocated funds from CDBG or, CDBG. or unencumbered cash. C CDBG from administration or somewhere else. Uh, it would be from unallocated funds. We're we're under the twenty percent cap, so we have room if we needed to allocate it. Okay. And is there a figure on here of what the unallocated funds are to date, as well as could I leave on the table one of the things we had discussed in past years, um, similar to what you're doing now? Um, is to uh, have a three-quarter review, three-quarters of the year through, um, if for some reason, similar to what we've done here, you've spent, you've allocated 40 and you've only spent 17, that the town manager and the CDBG committee is made, subcommittee is made aware of that, and we can um, reallocate that. So I'd just like to, at your convenience, um, no rush, if you could just provide the board with what is in the unallocated funds right now. Yep. And then if I could just leave it on the table, that that's one of the things um, we had asked under um, Carol Kowalski. So what we did in the, the uh, this year, and I'm trying to remember, is so when it comes around time to start doing the CDBG budget process, that's also roughly the three quarter, it's actually even a little bit before, it's more like the 60% mm -hmm. period. Uh, so, like, so this fund runs from, uh, is it July first, right? Yeah, and so when we so when we we meet in February, getting ready for the April mm -hmm. uh, public hearing, and I'm trying to remember. I 
I th I'm trying to remember if we brought that information back to the board this spring. We've never didn't. done that we yet. Didn't. I'd like to, but maybe the case okay. didn't arise. Yeah. Maybe the exercise was done and there wasn't. Yeah. I I'm not saying come talked, back yeah. with six thousand dollars is left, but yeah. I'm just saying. Okay. I, I am. I, uh, I can tell you that as a subcommittee, we absolutely okay. had this conversation in February. Okay. But we may have failed to bring it back to the full, okay. to the full group. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, further comments discussion. Okay, so uh, uh, I, I, do, I do have a comment, and that is um, just that one of the things that I really liked about the putting the money on the comprehensive master planning is because it is essentially kind of a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a one-shot deal, and I don't mean like, you know, one plan that we never plan again, but this is a, an expense that we don't plan on doing, uh, you know, on a regular and ongoing basis. And one of the things we need to emphasize to all of these groups that we're serving through CDBG funds is that this year's like increase notwithstanding is we really do anticipate these numbers declining as we have to push everybody off of CDBG and, so the f and we are kind of doing our part ourselves by saying we're spending this on a one-time money so next year if we did get, get a big cut where is it going to be for us it's going to be really obvious and for us it'll also be not that painful whereas for other groups um, it you know unfortunately it will be more painful and uh, I think this is one of those crazy votes where the town manager gets to vote. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're right. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. So, can I have a motion from the board? Yeah, I, I move to um, approve the um, the CDBG um, uh, budget as presented. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Everyone signifying yes, including the town manager. All right. Thank you. Next up, uh, Common Victor license transfer. Transfer. Joan Ping Lin at Great Walk. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Andrea Cole. I'm the paralegal of Attorney Chris Coleman's office. Tonight, I represent the applicant um, Jan Ping in DBA Great Walk Restaurant on the application. Uh, we are sitting the board to, to approve our application. Basically, it's just for the transfer or uh, change of ownership. The new business owner is going to keep the same uh, operation Chinese take out mostly take out have a few sitting there for uh, patients waiting um, restaurant they will keep the same name same menu same hours of operation remain unchanged uh, we will be happy to answer the question uh, if the board have any questions from the board does Joe or I was just wondering does the applicant has the applicant been I, I wasn't clear. Have you been working at Great Walk, or is this n a new restaurant? No, he hasn't business? been working at the Great Walk. He, he actually, it is the, the first business he will own if the time to approve his application. Uh, but he has, he has more than 14 years experience in working at a uh, restaurant. He currently employed by the Peking Tokyo restaurant at Cambridge yeah. as a chef. You anticipate most of the staff staying on for now? Ah, uh, yes, yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, except, obviously, except some the, changes. Yeah. You know, as a, my understanding, the couple, the seller, is working at the restaurant themselves. Yeah. After they sell the business, of course, they will, they will be, you know, they will go on to somewhere. Um, I mean, they will be retired. So Mr. Lin will manage the restaurant, and his family will be helping him. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions, and I think one the chair usually does in, in terms of serving <laughs> alcohol and, and yeah. that, so I'm not going to ask that question or, or, or give that recommendation okay. um, in terms of, you know, what they might want to do. Um, on your application, what is your seating capacity? Um, now I believe they have... And, and the reason I ask this is... Um, there's no listed seating capacity, and am I reading this correctly? There's only going to be two employees? Uh, I think Because God bless those two people if they're working 24-7. No, they, now they have 12, I believe. Okay, well, uh, if you could, because on the application there's no seating capacity. I don't know if you have that there. Uh, and if you could tell us the actual number of employees, you only have two listed. They have two in, I think that's the error, that's a mistake. They, they have 
maybe three in the kitchen and one in the front. So they will have do, four do you in total. Do want to double check that? Yeah. You know, with waitresses and hostess and... No waitress. Okay. They will just have one front taking the order and three, ki- uh, three serve in the kitchens. Okay. And that's seven days a week, those four? Seven days a week. So it should be four employees. I'm sorry. I'm just... Yeah. I'm yeah, in, don't worry. Yeah, in I this field tertiarily. Yeah. And the seating capacity currently is about 40, 60? Uh, no seating capacity? Okay. And then the last point I had was... Um, on your maintenance program, yes. Um, one of the things that I don't see there, and I just want to point it out because the business is already there and it's established, but I just want to make sure it sure. continues because of you know any neighbors yeah. a trash maintenance program. Of course, but that's in accordance with the town bylaws in terms of when you know you can't come before yeah. this time after that time. I- so if you could ask them just to update that and or. Obviously, as far as I know, I haven't heard any complaints. I'm going to assume that they're going to continue with the existing trash maintenance collection. I can sure without asking them us because when we do the health plan review application, we have already asked the same question to them. They answer they will keep the same trash removal company to provide service to them. Mm-hmm. We oh. shall, I believe, pick up twice a week. They have a two yard dumpster in the back. Uh, parking lot right now. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there will be the same service. No, I only ask it because sometimes, you know, when neighbors come in that. and they say, you didn't yeah. ask, so yeah, thank it's you. very important. I give my usual speech for alcohol. There's no alcohol license here. Oh, okay. I read it wrong. Sorry. Mr. Chair, you'll be continuing the same delivery service? Yes. Same delivery service here? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any further, we have move motion. Any Second. A second, as yeah. I can't even say my words. And if the public was here for this public hearing, any further discussion? Thank you for choosing our collection. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four Thank zero. You. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Bill Mon doing business as Retro Burger and Ice Cream. Welcome to Arlington. <laughs> Why, are we your last obstacle? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll, try, we'll try not to be too difficult. All right. As you know, my name is Bill Mond. I uh, am an Arlington resident. I've lived here uh, about 19 years. My wife and I moved here in the early 90s. We've raised our kids here <clears throat> about three years ago. For better or for worse, we went to the restaurant business. Okay. Uh, we started on Cape Cod in uh, 2010. And uh, we are working hard to transfer it into the Arlington uh, business. So um, we occupying space at 795 Mass Ave, and um, we hope to get up and running sometime with uh, this summer. Are you still running a business in Cape Cod? No, okay. no, we're trying to move everything here. All right. So we're all in. Okay, <laughs> questions from the board? Mr. Carroll. I just wanna say I'm thrilled to see that that space has been vacant for a while. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see you uh, coming in and uh, willing to take it on and, and, uh, and fill it and um, hope you bring some of that uh, Cape Cod, uh, the Cape Cod tourists this way. <laughs> Ms. Vaughn. First, I'd like to move approval. Second, I have no questions because you have everything in here from your trash maintenance program on. And we have insurance with a million dollar liability. <laughs> there you go. Notice I'm a court reporter during but the day. About, so. But what about your collision? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to need that. <laughs> and third, I want to say hats off to your not man enough options because yeah. I, when I looked at that, I was, he has burgers that's like, yeah. I think one's like the Yarmouth burger that my husband could yeah. devour too. Yeah. And then the not man enough option. So right. I think incorrect, that's a great, right. um, you know, restaurant tour marketing. My family's in the restaurant business. And when I saw that, I said, oh, I'm going to have to pass that on. We'll give it our best shot. Yeah. So, th- Will you be renaming some of those burgers to more Arlington? <laughs> yes, yeah. I didn't want to jump the gun and change the menu just yet. <laughs> but uh, Now, if Mr. Greeley were here, he would ask for, did you bring any samples and name one after me? So in his steam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will have an Arlington burger. I'm sure we'll probably do. Don't name any after us. We'll do I'm away with joking. the Yarmouth burger. I'm pretty certain. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mrs. is moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank welcome you. to Arlington. Thank I you. mean, welcome to the Arlington business. <laughs> you, you're already welcome in Arlington. Thank you. All right, next up, Adam Rosario, second-hand dealer license. Thank you for your help with the chair earlier. I have, you're welcome. I knew he was in need. 
<clears throat> so tell us about your business, please. Well, currently I, uh, I own a business in Auburn, Massachusetts. It's uh, called Adams Estate Jewelry. And I've been in the business for over 10 years. And um, I've lear learned everything from managing and sales to actually uh, learning about the back end of the business, which would be actually the product, pricing, development, a little bit of everything. Um, so with my knowledge, I opened up that location. And it has been very successful. Uh, in doing so, and I do a lot of business in and out of Boston, and a lot of people were, you know, pointing me in this direction that Arlington is a great town, great location, uh, surrounding, you know, surrounding towns here are, uh, you know, it's it's a good, 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 I, I guess I would say um, surrounding support area, so uh, I, I believe it's the heart of the area, I've been looking at the map, and um, the location that I'm looking at currently is already a jewelry store, mm -hmm. so uh, it's uh, it's in a, a good area. There's a barbershop next to it. Um, I could see a lot of potential success. Uh, the clientele's um, a little bit older than I am, and that's majority of my clientele. Yeah. So, uh, uh, questions from the board. Um trying to find it if yeah. mrs Kropelka or my colleagues could help me just where you put change in awning um, oh yes, yes do we have something here from planning or is that just building has to approve that planning has to approve it also okay is it in here or am i missing it or i would just point it out that it you know when we as we say um when we make motions yeah. to approve which i assume we are subject to yeah. all conditions i just usually this planning report in right. here it's in here it's here it's but it says the business owner is encouraged to apply to inspection services for signs from the private fabricating so okay i I, yeah. I thought we used to get something from planning also on awning but i'll let after it's approved oh after okay thank so, you I, I, yeah i think that the bottom line is make sure that you get your plan approved before you get the sign and the awning built because okay. it's very awkward when you pay, shut out the money, and then it doesn't meet code, and uh, that's always unpleasant. And right. we do, it works yeah. much better if we get it approved beforehand. Absolutely, uh, I understand that. You know, only twenty-five percent of the window can actually be labeled. Yeah. Um, so that's that's something that I've already taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. I understand. You know, there is historic areas within Arlington, so I would love to stay within those borders and actually, you know, hopefully add to it because uh, I am in a state store. And, um, you know, everything I do, I do as tastefully as possible, and I try to add to the town. Mm -hmm. um, I actually brought some, uh, some ads that I did here uh, over Christmas, and um, just, you know, here's, here's a statement. It says, at Adams Estate Jewelry, our showroom collection is all about quality and character. We believe heirlooms are created so that legend can live on. It's our mission to bring the beauty of unique, antique, estate, and vintage jewelry to our customers. Come visit us this holiday season for a gift that makes sure um, to make sure that special someone a smile. So it says uh, Adams Estate Jewelry, where exceptional quality meets rich history. Cool. And I'll um, I'll move approval, and um, I really appreciate the effort you put into this and thank you. Um, choosing Arlington. It seems, and I look that you were told by someone else, and hopefully you go and tell someone else that this is a, play, a great place to run a business. Um, with that, no, good luck. Thank you. So Thank you. All conditions? Yes. Sir. And seconded. Second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank Welcome you. Arlington. Appreciate it. Next up, Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is anyone here for Citizens Open Forum? Come on up. How can we help you tonight? Yeah, I'm Richard Langone, 12 Swanton Place. <coughs> I'm a uh, town meeting member, Precinct 6. Um, what difference the year makes? Basically, I'm here and um, I want to express some concern about the way that us, the 94 percenters, People that pay taxes in this town, the majority of the taxes, are being treated. When we come to a public hearing or we come in to discuss anything matters with the selectmen, we're put on the agenda at the end. And I think that 
taxpayers and if we're the base of the town's taxes, we should get a little more respect. And the reason I became a town meeting member was because I had issues with the selectmen, a revenue issue, it seemed to me. And it seems that the revenue issues in this town are based, they seem to be going after the middle class and the elderly. People I talk to on the street, the elderly are moving out as soon as they retire. They can't afford to live here. Their children can't, if they stay in the town, their children can't afford to buy here. This town's got a uh, valuable real estate market. And if an elderly person moves out down, down off of uh, Wheaton Road in that area, down by the projects, they take the top of the house off, put a top, another top on top of it, make it a two-story, sell the house for twice the money. People outside of this town waiting to come in and take it. You're losing a lot of history by forcing the Allentonians out of this, out of this town. I think the, the residents of this town, the backbone of this town, should become town meeting members and help to change the way, the direction the town's working. I don't believe that all the elected officials and in town meeting members are not working in the best interest of the taxpayers. So I hope, I don't know if this will fall on deaf ears, I don't know how big an audience you got, but I hope that the citizens the hard working class citizens of Arlington get together and start participating as town meeting members and trying to make a change. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lengo. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak under Citizens Open Forum? Seeing none, <coughs> we will move on to item 15, vote, water and sewer rate adjustment. Mr. Chuck Lane, Mr. Rodemacher, and Chris Woodcock of Woodcock and Associates. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So before the board tonight, uh, is a proposal for water and sewer rate adjustments for FY14 uh, that is really the culmination of a year's worth of work. Uh, so just uh, going back a little bit uh, to provide a little bit of background, uh, about a year ago, uh, the board voted to increase rates for FY13. Uh, at that time, uh, we talked about how in the past the board had voted on multi-year rate increases, but we were asking for a one-year rate increase to support the budget while we performed a rate study. And that rate study was going to be focused on several factors that had come before the board uh, and the board had been interested in, as well as some factors that had been raised uh, by members of the Finance Committee, most notably Ryan Ferrara, who has uh, re really spurred us to move forward with this and gave us a lot of help in setting this stage for a nice comprehensive rate study. The factors that we were looking at were the increasing MWRA debt costs and the pressures they were putting on our budget, questions about seasonal rates and second water meters for irrigation use, unaccounted for water and what a meter replacement program would do to make up for some of that unaccounted for water, the frequency of billing. As you know, we're currently semi-annually billing, and there was talk about whether or not we should bill more frequently. And finally, looking at our usage tiering to determine whether or not the rate blocks or the, the tiers of usage that we build at were appropriate given current levels of use. So we went through um, uh, a process of finding Chris Woodcock, who's here tonight, and he's been before the board to introduce himself and talk about his methodology in the past. Um, <clears throat> and we worked together uh, with Mike Rademacher and Chris uh, on uh, a study to, to make a recommendation that's before you tonight. So before I ask Chris to talk about the study he went through and, and talk about everything that he found, I just want to quickly talk about the recommendations that are before you. So there's really two sets of recommendations. There's rate adjustments that the board is being asked to vote on tonight. And then there are other proposals that are before the board that don't need to be acted on tonight, but address a number of the other matters uh, that prompted us to do this rate study. So the two things that the board is being asked to vote on tonight are a 7.5% rate increase for water, sewer, and the administrative fee as of July 1st. And then as of January 1st, creating new water and sewer rates as well as new private fire service charges and further amendments to the administrative charges. And those, um, and those are in new tiers. We currently bill at tiers of zero to 200 CCFs per year and over 200 CCFs per year for water and zero to 1,000 CCFs every six months for sewer and over 1,000 CCFs every six months uh, for sewer. The new tiers being proposed would bill at tiers both at six month intervals as opposed to a year and then six months of zero to 30 CCFs, 30 to 60 CCFs, and then over 60 CCFs. So those are the two issues that the board's being asked to vote on tonight. However, as of July 1st, 2014, 
we're telling the board that it's our intention to convert from semi-annual billing to quarterly billing for several reasons. First, there's a benefit to cash flow, but also that will allow us to set the stage for capturing quarterly usage data that then in July 1st of 2015, we can start to bill for winter usage of water to figure out how much people are irrigating so that they're not paying extra for the water they use during the summer that's not going back down the sewer. So we'd actually be billing sewer at the winter water usage rate. Um, one further thing to point out, uh, the conversion to quarterly billing uh, is still an ongoing internal discussion. We've had meetings with IT and the Treasurer's Office. I know the Treasurer's here tonight. Um, and that's something we're <clears throat> hopeful that we can, can do successfully by July 1st uh, of next fiscal year. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chris if it's okay with the Chair. Mr. Whitcock. Thank you. Um, I, I think Adam's probably covered much of what I was going to say, so I'm going to try to um, skip over some of the remarks. He certainly talked about what it is we were looking at, the various tasks um, and, and the elements that we looked at. Um, in going through and doing this, the first overall thing we really need to look at is what are your expenses going to be in the future? We know what the budget is this year. What are they going to be in the future? I've projected out 10 years. There's a spreadsheet that has the 10-year projection on that. Um, it's provided to the town. It's yours to do what you've paid for it. Um, what I'd admonish is that's a long period of time. Anything after three or four years is pretty speculative um, with, with financial projections. They're there, but, but look at them with that uh, jaundiced eye, if you will. In general, what we looked at is about a 2% increase going forward in the town's operating expenses. Um, we looked at the MWRA assessments separately um, because they're huge. They're half of the water expenses, two-thirds, three-quarters, actually, I think, of the sewer expenses. Um, and we've taken the projections that the MWRA has publicly put out there. Now, I will tell you, I use those public projections. They're typically a little bit high. Um, so uh, if you will, these are a little bit conservative on the high side, the projections of expenses. On the capital cost, we've used the town's engineering consultants, I believe it was Weston and Sampson's, um, projections for water department expenses. Um, they vary from year to year, but it was basically about a million dollars a year that they were looking at. To finance, finance those, um, we looked at a $900,000 a year loan from the MWRA. Um, they loan money out, they do it at a very great deal. It's 10 years, 0% interest. You, you can't find money that cheap. The other 100,000 of that, those capital projects on the water side would come out of the annual water rate, water revenues. Um, the one exception is a $2 million loan that we projected in fiscal 2015 um, that would be used for the meter replacement program to put in new meters. Um, the payments for those would probably be starting and, and happen the following fiscal year in fiscal year 2016. On the sewer side with the capital costs, um, again, the town has a, a fairly detailed capital program for what's needed for the sewer side. Um, it's initially about a million dollars a year, a little bit higher than that, drops down over time to um, about three quarters of a million in the latter years. Um, to fund that, what we looked at is to continue to get loans from the MWRA for the sewer side, these are a little different. They're not offered annually, they're offered every other year. Um, and it's about three quarters of a million that the town could expect to get every other year to help towards the sewer expenses. Even better deal than the water, 55% of it's actually a grant. Um, so principal forgiveness, forgiveness, if you will. Um, the other 45% um, at 0% over five years. Um, the impact of that, though, is that in the years when there isn't um, any MWRA loan um, or there's not enough from the MWRA loans, what pays for that? And, and what we've put together is a plan that would initially start with about three quarters of a million dollars, go into a, um, a capital fund. And I use that, that term somewhat euphemistically. Um, but if you think of a separate sewer capital fund, money going into that every year. Some years it'd be a positive balance and would go the next year. The idea was to try to keep a somewhat steady uh, amount coming in every year from rates. As I said, it started out at about three quarters of a million dollars the first year, dropping down to a half million dollars in the latter years. Again, those are somewhat speculative. I suspect there'll be more projects and that may come up to three quarters of a million in some of those latter years. I know there was a question that was asked about um, doing that much funding out of revenues, three quarters of a million dollars out of rate revenues, 
what about borrowing that? Um, and we did look at borrowing that, borrowing all but $100,000. So we just get $100,000 a year from rates. The town would then issue its own bonds. Um, and I've assumed 20 year bonds, 4% interest rate uh, on those. Um, and what it does is it saves in the initial years, as you can imagine. You don't have that big expense. It's spread out over the years, over the term of the bonds. Um, but at a point in time, um, and I didn't go out far enough to see what that is, but probably after seven or eight years, it's going to start costing more because you're going to be paying for all of those bond issues in the initial years and then all the future bond issues that come with it. So if you were to bond it, what you would do is you would save in terms of lower rates. How much would you save? A percent or two each year. Um, but in the latter years, you'd be paying much more than that because now you're paying interest on those bonds. I think this is a, uh, a somewhat typical case, case of pay me now, pay me later, or um, sort of passing the buck on to the next generation, if you will. Um, the next task we looked at is water sales. Once we had all the expenses, how much water are you going to sell? Um, there's a chart in the, in the report, the memorandum that you have, that shows um, that those sales have been dropping. And that's been happening all over the Commonwealth. It's been happening all over the country um, for the last dozen years or so. And there's a number of reasons for those. Um, and I think we maybe even talked about them at the last meeting. If you'd like, I can uh, go into that a little bit. <coughs> For purposes of this study, I'm projecting that they're going to level off now, that that's going to stop, that the, the drop isn't going to continue to happen. Um, I hope I'm right. Fortunately, you're in a position in Arlington where you have um, sufficient funds and reserves that if I'm wrong, if sales do drop, if it continues raining like it did last week um, and tonight, um, and sales do drop, um, that you do have enough to cover it. Um, so I'm hoping that- You're cheering for a drought is what you're saying. Um, I don't know. I got a lawn. My wife's planted an awful lot of really nice stuff lately. So no, I'm not. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. Um, but anyways, I've, I've assumed that the, the sales are going to stabilize um, over time. I think one of the reasons for the drop in sales is the economy. The economy seems to have picked up a little bit. Um, so I'm hoping that that's sort of going to be part of the reason why it stabilizes. The only exception is in the year fiscal year 2016 when I have estimated a 2% bump, an increase in um, sales as a result of putting in the new meters from that $2 million meter program. Um, and it'll stay stable after that. Uh, once we have that, the expenses and the sales, it's, it's really, you know, divide the dollars by the gallons and so many dollars per gallon um, uh, in the simplest terms. Um, one of the things that I looked at is, is the current rate structure. Again, Adam described that. Um, and just increasing across the board. If you need 10% more revenues, just to increase everything 10%. Um, your water rates right now um, are a little unusual. They go from zero to 200, 100 cubic feet. It's sort of an arcane instead of gallons. I don't know why, but everybody uses 100 cubic feet. Um, it goes from zero to 200 cubic feet is one rate, and anything over that in a year is a higher rate. Um, and it accumulates throughout the year. That's very unusual. Um, I, I've only seen that one other time in 40 years of doing this um, to, to, to does that. On the sewer side, it goes from zero to 1,000 hundred cubic feet every six month billing period. So they're very different rate structures um, on the water and the sewer. Um, this, the sewer, um, where it resets at the, at the um, start of the next billing period is the more typical. Um, and there is a $20.31% administration fee right now um, that's billed every six months to everybody. It doesn't matter how big, how small you are, what size meter, what kind of customer um, you have that. That's a little unusual. Typically, those types of charges vary with the type of customer or water meter side, and I'll explain that a little bit more later. Um, in the report, um, I've listed what the projected increases are each of the fiscal years. Um, those are projections. I don't think anybody's asking you to, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, to, to adopt those at those points. Those are more informational as to what kind of increases you'd be looking at in the future. The second area we looked at is, is new blocks. Change that zero to 200 a year, zero to 1,000 every six months. <clears throat> and based on the analysis that we got, and we got detailed analysis of every individual account within the town of how much water they used every six month period. Um, and we're able to, with the, the wonders of computers, to say how much in different ranges. The blocks that um, Adam indicated we're looking at for both water and sewer are zero to 30 hundred cubic feet, um, 30 to 60 hundred cubic feet, and then anything over 60 hundred cubic feet. 
Um, I, I understand there's been questions about where did those come from, why did you pick those. The zero to 30, um, about half of the people in Arlington use less than 30 hundred cubic feet in six months. Um, and about half of the use is less than that. So it seemed like a very good point where I can say, okay, half the people use less, half the people use more. This may be a good cutoff where the price is going up to start to encourage some, some conservation, some wiser use of water. The over 60 cubic feet, there's only about 10% um, of the people, uh, of the customers, um, and it's mostly businesses within town would be subject to that. 90% never go over that amount. Um, but it is about 25% of your sales would be at that highest tier. Um, they're also picked to be easily modified for quarterly use. So instead of zero to 30, 100 cubic feet and 30 to 60 per six months, it'd be zero to 15 and 15 to 30. Uh, if the board agrees to go with quarterly billing, it's something that could easily be done. The rates would stay the same. It's just you would drop the, the usage by half. Um, as Adam said, the other two elements of that are to uh, include a new service or administrative fee. Um, that is the intent of it is to recover the costs of billing, collection, meter reading, things like that that are the same for everybody. It, it doesn't matter whether you're housing authority, Myrac Chevrolet, you know, whoever. Everybody costs the same for a stamp, for a meter reading, that type of thing. The collection costs from the treasurer's office. The other part of it, though, is related to the costs of water meters, buying them, testing them, replacing them, uh, and the service lines, the pipe that goes from the street to your house. Um, those sometimes need repair. Um, and those do vary by size. Um, the larger the, the service, the larger the meter, the larger those costs are. Um, and, and that's the difference and the reason for a difference um, in those fees that are, that are presented to you in that, that um, memorandum. Um, in total, those revenues would generate a little over a half a million dollars a year of additional revenue. One of the reasons for those is to help fix the revenues. Um, water and sewer systems are basically fixed cost um, operations. Um, almost all of your costs are fixed. The MWRA assessments are fixed and that's the biggest piece. Your debt is fixed. Um, there's very little um, that varies, at least in the short term. In the long term, you can impact the MWRA assessments a little bit, um, but, but most of your costs are fixed. And if everybody stopped using water, your costs are going to be the same um, for the year. <clears throat> the idea behind having this um, service charge, this meter charge, um, would be to help stabilize those revenues, make them a little more predictable so we don't have to decide whether we're going to have a drought or not. Um, it will help with that a little bit. It's only a half a million dollars. The other part was the um, charges for private fire sprinkler connections. Buildings that have um, a connection to the system, a pipe running in, running to the little sprinklers um, um, that you often see in buildings um, that have those. Those people are getting a service that others don't. It's a valuable service. It, it saves tremendously on um, fire protection. It saves tremendously, frankly, for the fire department too in terms of um, time and effort for the fire department. But there is a benefit to the user for those um, and, and they should be paying for them. It's a fairly common fee. Um, around the country to have that type of fee. Um, so we've recommended that. And again, that fee is really just paying for not the water. The amount of water that comes through and goes to a sprinkler is, is you know, I could MasterCard it. It's very small. Um, but the cost of providing oversized pipes, storage, capacity, that's where the real cost is, and that's what's included <clears throat> in that, that charge. The other alternative that we looked at, and I'm not going to spend much time on this unless you, you have questions, was to look at seasonal rates. It was one of the things um, that we had talked about, Adam, Michael, and I, and I think I may have even talked to the board about it when I first met with you. Um, we're not recommending anything like the seasonal rate. The seasonal rate is typically something where um, higher rate in the summertime when water is more expensive, lower rate in the wintertime when there's lots of capacity available, lots of water available. Um, it's very popular uh, in the west, southwest, places that literally don't have enough water um, to encourage water conservation. Um, we shouldn't be wasting water, and I'm not suggesting that we waste water, but there isn't that urgent need that there is in other parts of the country um, that we have here. The MWRA um, would, would love to sell more water. They have lots and lots of water. Um, the reservoirs are full. Um, the other problem with the seasonal rate is it, it, it almost requires monthly billing, but certainly quarterly billing in order to find out what is the winter period? 
that you're using? You know, does everybody getting billed in uh, December, January, February, March to say that's your winter period? No, we don't have that necessarily at this point um, because you're billed every six months. So we haven't really got the information to do it. So it's really more of an implementation problem um, and a lack of necessity for it. As Adam mentioned uh, earlier, we also looked at billing frequency, changing from semi-annual bills to quarterly bills. Um, this is starting to also happen an awful lot um, in the Commonwealth to make that type of change. Um, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, semi-annual bills were not uncommon. They're pretty uncommon now. Um, the M MWRA does a survey every year. In their latest survey, only 10 of the 60 communities surveyed um, bill semi-annually. Um, everybody else is quarterly, um, and there's, I think, a half dozen or five of them that bill monthly now. Um, I also looked across the whole Commonwealth. Um, there's a company, Tie and Bond, that does a study of water and sewer rates of every, uh, all 351 cities and towns, um, of what their um, rates are and, and, and their billing frequency. And, and uh, across the state, um, only about a third bill um, semi-annually, every six months, um, much more than the MWRA survey. I think that's skewed by a lot of the smaller communities. You look at little towns out in Berkshire County or, or Hamden County um, that, that only bill every six months, small budgets, um, and, and that's all they do. Um, I think I can almost guarantee you that um, within the next 20 years, you would certainly be billing quarterly, despite what you may decide tonight, and you will likely be billing monthly within the next 20 years. Um, if you think of all of the other um, utility services you get, cable, television, uh, internet, uh, telephone, gas, electric, everything is monthly. Um, water and sewers, um, the only thing that isn't. And, and frankly, New England, we're somewhat unique uh, in not billing monthly for it. The next item we looked at, um, this is a big item, was, was second water meters. Um, as the cost of water and sewer has gone up, particularly sewer, the Boston Harbor cleanup, uh, and what's happened with that and the cost for treatment at the MWRA, um, more and more people have said, hey, wait a minute, my water use isn't really indicative of the amount of sewage that I put back in the system. I water my lawn a lot. I fill my swimming pool. I uh, have a car wash that I run, um, that type of thing. Um, and you shouldn't really be billing me on uh, water use because it isn't necessarily what comes back in sewage. Um, now, frankly, that's true of just about everybody. Um, not everybody's, all their water comes back as sewage, but, you know, for the most part, 85, 90 percent are. But there are people that have a much lower percentage return, 30, 40, 50 percent. A car wash, I think, is probably a very good example of something like that. Uh, in some cases, a laundromat, water that's lost in the drying process. Um, that doesn't come back. Um, nurseries um, and people certainly with big lawns. I'm not asking you to um, take pity on people with big lawns and huge irrigation systems. However, there is an equity question there. That's water that's not coming back to the sewage system and you're, and you're charging them for that. This is a problem that's, that's, that's running um, across the Commonwealth um, and it's gotten to be a bigger and bigger issue in recent years in a lot of cities and towns. You, you, I, I can assure you, you're not the only one dealing with this question. Um, I'm looking at it for a number of cities and towns right now anyways. Um, there, there are several solutions to this. Um, you can allow a second meter. I think Arlington used to allow a second meter. If I, no, you didn't. Um, you can allow a second meter. Somebody to put in a meter that measures what's going on to the lawn, what's going into the swimming pool, what's you know, evaporating through uh, laundry machines, that type of thing. Um, and that's quite common to do that. Um, frankly, it gets to be a bit of a pain in the neck. You have to put in a second meter, read the second meter, test the second meter, take care of it, who owns it, who pays for it. You know, there gets to be issues in a lot more meter reading and billing and putting in new billing systems that'll take total consumption, subtract the other meter, um, that type of thing. Um, another way of doing it is, is to base everybody's water and sewer rates on just a percentage of your water use. Okay, I understand all the water doesn't come back as sewage, so I'll bill you um, sewer based on 80% of your water use. Um, Worcester does that. Norwood does that. Um, frankly, I think people in Arlington are bright enough to figure out that, you know, if you're only billing it on 80% and you raise the rate 20%, six of one half dozen or another, it doesn't really do anything. Um, but. But it is done, and, and it's fairly common to do it, and a lot of people 
um, are happy with it, thinking they, they're, they're getting a break because they're only built on 80% of their water use. The method that, that, that we're recommending for Arlington that's getting to be used more and more is to look at the winter water use of every account. Um, it's going to take some doing to do that, and that's why this is, is the recommendation is to implement this a few years from now. But to look at what people use in the winter time, when there isn't irrigation going on, when there isn't um, um, people filling pools, washing cars, that type of stuff. Um, and say, I'm going to base your sewer charges on what you used in the winter. Um, I, I was on a sewer board in, in, in Whalen for many years, and, th and that's what we did. Um, we just said, I'm going to get the water department's winter water use. I'm going to figure out everybody's bill once a year in March, once they have that winter water use. And I'm going to send you the same bill for four quarters, um, and then I'll recalculate it the next March. Uh, in terms of the revenue um, stability, it, it's, it's, it's even better than property taxes. I know exactly what's going to come in every year because once I find, figure it out in March, I, I have it and it's going to be the same bill for every, everybody for every quarter. Um, it's going to take some doing to put in a system like that. It's going to take some uh, work in, on the billing system to implement it. Um, that's what the recommendation is, though, for the second meter. Um, the last thing we looked at... Um, was the level of debt service assistance <coughs> that's provided by the town to um, mitigate water and sewer rates, essentially transferring a portion of those costs to the uh, general fund, to the general tax rate. So taking it off of water and sewer rates, putting it on your tax rate. Um, it's now been set at $5,593,112 a year. Um, and, and getting the debt from the MWRA I can split that between water and sewer and how much is each. One of the things we were look, asked to look at is what happens if we change that? Either up, down, eliminate it. Um, and in the report, there was um, three different examples. Eliminate it, I think cut it in half, and then increase it to um, $7.5 million. And, and, and obviously, you can go anywhere in between, um, you know, and, and you can extrapolate from that, you know, what, what those amounts might be. Um, that's clearly a policy decision of the board as to how you want to do that, how you want to recover those costs. Um, there is only one other town in the Commonwealth who's doing it. It, it was a, 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 a provision of the statutes of the Commonwealth that allows towns to do that um, when the, the MWRA sewer costs started going up. Um, Arlington availed itself to it. Uh, Winchester did in terms of residential accounts only, not for non-residential. Um, Lastly, there was the implementation schedule. A lot of this stuff is going to take, um, to implement, will take changes in the billing and collection system. Um, and I, I probably can't emphasize enough how difficult that is. You, 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 I, I think we tend to look at having computers and the power of computers and others oh, is something we can do very easy. It's not. It's very difficult to um, implement uh, a lot of these changes um, within different billing systems. And, and so, uh, again, working um, with the staff, we've come up with a, a proposal to go ahead with a 7.5% increase now that you've been talking about. You were talking about when I was here last time. Uh, I think Michael's given it to you uh, in years before. That 7.5% increase each fiscal year. Um, go ahead with that uh, on July 1st. Um, it's going to cost you a bit more money. You need more revenue than a 7.5% increase will give you. It'll cost you about $600,000 on an annual basis. Um, again, fortunately, you have sufficient reserves um, to cover that, so that that's not a problem. And that plan of the 7.5% increases um, envision drawing those reserves way down. I wouldn't draw them down uh, much more than that, though. Uh, and in fact, what we're suggesting is come January 1st of 2014, you go ahead and implement the the new tiers, 0 to 30, 30 to 60, the new service charges, the meter charges, and the new fire charges. Um, and that will then cover all of the costs for the second half of the year. The, the, the net loss for the fiscal year would only be about 300000 for the water and sewer enterprise funds. Um, then on January, um, I'm sorry, on July 1st, 2014, six months after that, convert to the quarterly billing. Um, it'll be difficult. 
Um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to candy coat it. it. You'll hear problems. There will be issues with it. There will be screaming coming from this building from people who work here um, having to do it. It's not going to be an easy thing to do. Um, but as I said, it's something you're going to be doing anyway sooner or later. You might as well bite the bullet and do it now. I think it will help uh, in a lot of ways. Again, a lot of that is, is discussed um, in the report to you, and, and I won't repeat all of that. Um, and then in July of 2015, implement the new sewer rates based on the winter water use from that prior um, winter of end of 13, beginning of calendar 14. So we have the quarterly water consumption for that period. You can use that and use that for all the sewer bills going forward from July 1, 2015 forward. That was an awful lot of information um, for you all to absorb. <laughs> I thought he said Adam covered most of it. <laughs> um, so let me stop there. Uh, I'm sure you probably have questions. Uh, Adam, did you have more on the presentation? On the presentation you wanted to go, or no. go did you have anything you wanted to add, Mike? Okay, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very thorough presentation. I also want to thank the town manager and uh, Mr. Radebacher, the DPW director, for actually briefing, uh, you know, brief, they briefed each of us on this um, also so that we, we could be sure to understand what was being undertaken. Um, I, I think none of us here would like to be having to, to raise the rates every year, which um, we do unfortunately have to do. But I, I think it's important to remind folks why we are at this this um, point. I, I think if you go back over a quarter century now, um, we'll all remember the the uh, morass that was uh, Boston Harbor that um, used used to be um, administered by the Metropolitan District Commission, and it was a great place for um, you know, you'd have ribbon cuttings in the towns for you know the new sewer and water projects, and then just forget about it. Water was considered and sewage was considered basically a free commodity, and the costs were never really thought of, and that's why that, what used to be the flounder capital of the world, now has no flounder left in it at all. Um, the beaches were unswimmable, um, and it's not really that far from here, and it's easy for communities like ours and the other 60, 59 communities in the MWRA district to forget about that, that we helped to contribute to that problem. Um, just as we draw on the water infrastructure out in the um, central and western parts of the state and the, the vitality of that I think was driven home to all of us um, just a few years ago when we had a big failure and we were without water for a couple of days and a, and a boil um, order so th th those are some of the things that drive the cost I mean right here in Arlington we'll be seeing this I guess starting this summer we'll be seeing a major replacement of our um, water and sewer infrastructure um, and what some of those pipes are what 70 80 years old um, that's what drives a lot of the costs as far as the increases and so I think it's important that you know any of the the ratepayers who may be watching that that's that's why we are at this point where we have to uh, continually meet our burden to um, make sure that that system is brought up to the 21st brought up to the 20th century never mind 21st and a, a lot of progress has been um, has been um, made um, I really like the thought that's gone into this um, I, I like the fact that um, price sensitivity is being put into the model where no no longer is water looked at as as a free commodity and I think in the future as we break this down into more more tiers there'll be more price sensitivity uh, there um, one thing that as we discuss this I think is important also to remind ratepayers and maybe watching at home though that as they look at these this escalating rate structure it's an incremental rate structure just just like your your income tax works it's not as if you're going up to a, a, a higher rate per gallon or per cubic foot um, you know by for your entire water use as you as you increase in usage it's a stepped system so I'd encourage anyone who's interested to I know it was posted online to pull it down and, and um, take a look at that but I think that is important that that price sensitivity is there and it gives um, individuals and families more control I think over their over their costs by by having that rather than just having the two tiers that we currently have um, today um, I like in this proposal the the um, the quarterly billing is in terms of um, allowing families to to 
control their expenses on a more regulated basis rather than be, being hit with two larger bills um, throughout um, throughout the year and I recognize that we got a, a memo from the, the treasurer and I recognize there's going to be a lot of strain on the, the treasurer's office and the postal operation as well and um, uh, you know I sympathize but I, th I think <laughs> I, I think that for our the residents of town and, and the consumers, especially when we are forced to, to um, you know, assume ever greater burdens in this area, that that's important. Uh, Mr. Woodcock mentioned that Arlington is one of the only towns that adopted some um, uh, debt assistance that was to avoid rate shock back back in the day. Um, and uh, but we probably can't really tweak that too much, uh, lest we pass that through to the taxpayers it, it's a it, there's a lot of dynamic tension in, in, in these models I mean in that between the taxpayers and the ratepayers and there's also dynamic tension between our need to meet our revenue targets but our, also our conservation goals and not wanting um, wastage of water you know lastly I, I appreciate the um, the creative approach to the um, to the, to the issue of, of summer water usage that doesn't get returned to the system. You're right, there was a town meeting warrant article that was submitted, I think, last year, and it was not, I don't think it was recommended by this board, and it, it um, was not adopted by town meeting, but um, it was an issue that was recognized, and I think that this is a creative um, approach. So I only have two questions, really, on, on the, um, the proposal before us. First, on Page three. You make reference to um, the water meters and, and changing the, the uh, customer meter service charge. It says these costs are greater for customers with larger meters. It costs more to purchase, maintain, and test larger meters, and customers with larger meters can require the use of more of the fixed capacity costs than customers with smaller demands. I understand why it would cost more to purchase. I'm trying to understand, and this is not understanding how a water meter is put together. I, I look at testing and I think, well, heck, to test the brake lights on a Fiat is the same as to test the brake lights on a Hummer, but <laughs> maybe I don't know how a water meter is put together. Does a larger water meter necessarily, does it have more connections typically and therefore more moving parts that need to be tested? No, it's, it's, it's actually the... Um the physical process of testing it. Most, most of the um, <clears throat> 95, 98 percent of the meters in, in Arlington are, are five eighths inch meters. You've probably seen them in your basement or something. Yeah. And those are really easy to test. What happens, somebody comes in and does a couple um, fittings, puts in a new one, takes it out and tests it usually. Yeah. Um, when you get to the bigger ones, the two and the three inch ones, it's not possible to do that. And generally what you have to do is bring somebody in um, from a meter testing company and do it right there on the spot. Um, the small ones you can do. It, get, it gets to be more difficult as they get bigger. Yeah. But the, the, the two and three inch is the largest that there is in Arlington, but the two and the three inch, um, and maybe even the one and a half, get to be pretty difficult to move there. Um, they're big, um, and, and you don't really pull them out and you bring somebody in to, to, um, to do test them. Yeah. Um, and frankly, they should be tested more frequently too. Uh, yeah. A lot more water going through them, a lot more um, money, if you will, going through them, and, sure. and um, you know, sort of the, the the protocol is to do small residential ones every ten years or so, and the large ones, um, you know, particularly three, four, five inch ones, um, and, or three, four, six inch, um, even annually. Um, yeah. Some of them do it, so it's it's the cost of doing it and the frequency both. Okay, thanks. And I just have one more question, then I'll I'll shut up. <laughs> um, I I. Um, I'm always a fan of phasing. I, I always like a cautious, incremental approach. But I do see that there are a lot of phases in, in this, phasing in. And the, the particular area where I have a question is why the implementation of the new tiering and the implementation of quarterly billing is not phased in, conjun are not phased in conjunction with one another. I understand why the... Uh, winter usage would be put off a year because you're looking for that quarterly billing to be able to accurately mm -hmm. monitor what winter usage is, but I don't understand why those other two phases are, uh, are split. I, I think, and, and I mean, you started off mentioning the work of 
Adam and Mike, um, you know, and, and, and I would echo that. I mean, the, 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 the whole analysis was um, made easier and made more smoothly because of um, really deep involvement of both of them throughout this process. And, and one of the things that um, we looked at was going ahead, well, let's go ahead and do the quarterly billing in you know, July. Why don't we just do it right away? Um, and it's a difficult process. Um, you had mentioned a, a, uh, a note you have from the treasurer. I just briefly saw that this evening when I got here. Um, it's a difficult process to do that. Um, you have the capability now to read the readers um, instantly. With, with the, the radio reads the, the, the network that you can read them. So it's not a matter of sending somebody out and you know, looking at meters the way it used to do. But it's taking that information that's now being um, put into the billing system every six months and doing that twice as often, doing it every quarterly. Um, doesn't seem like a big deal. Um, but there's the postage, the stamps. Um, uh, again, I, I looked at the treasurer's report very quickly, but you know there were things in there that I noticed about the, the bill stuffing machines, the environment down there, things like that, um, that I think will take some time to look at and address and make sure everything's working. Um, because what you don't want is to switch to quarterly billing and have it not work. Yeah, no, I, that's all clear to me. I'm just wondering why the, why the quarterly billing is not implemented at the same time as a new block rate structure. Oh, it could be. Um, you could put off the block rate structure, um, you know, for a whole year uh, and do it later like that. I think the idea was to try to get it into place now, um, get the new idea of those new blocks in place um, so people are used to them. Uh, at this point, um, and frankly, stop some of the bleeding that's happening. If the the seven and a half percent increase, as I said, is is going to you know leave you short six hundred thousand dollars or so um, for fiscal fourteen. If you put in the new blocks um, in j uh, January, um, it'll cut that in half basically. Mm -hmm. I, I would just quickly add it, it was the financial reason of getting the the new tiers in, in January that kept it there. We did work with the treasurer, myself, Mike, to look at a January 1 date for going into quarterly, and that was just too quick to get yeah. the operation yeah. up and running. So that's why we have those stages, as you pointed out. Okay. Thanks. So I think we could move it later. If we, you know, we, we can choose to do that. It's just a little, we'll, it, it drills deeper into our reserve gotcha. and we we'll let it go. Gotcha. Who's next? I'm going last. I'm going to let you guys ask them all first. All right. No, I feel like I'm being piggy, so I don't Steve, want to. Um, in, thank, thank you very much. And I, I, I'm not going to say too much because I think Joe covered um, most of what I was thinking regarding the report. Um, in other communities I know you've worked in, many of them, have you ever seen uh, online bill pay for these bills? Um, yes. Um, Yes, in ter and I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. Like, um, I, so I, I could just sign online and pay these bills as you know, yes. many communities. Through your MasterCard or something yep. like that. Often there's a, a, a charge for it because there's a charge for the MasterCard or Visa yeah. for, for processing. It's sometimes um, some communities, water departments, will, will eat that um, and ju just <coughs> incur it as part of their costs. Um, becoming very common. Mm. And online, seeing you know in real time what your actual water use is yeah. too, and you know graphs of it and things like that. I, I, I wasn't sure which, but but both of those, it's, it's um, yeah a lot more frequently. That's that's starting to happen. Yeah, and um, I, I appreciate that. And just uh, going through Mr. Gillen's report, I think that you know a lot of these concerns can be taken care of with technological updates, and I hope that's something we continue to work towards. Thank you. Sure. Um, Steve, do you want to be in Diane to go, or do you want to step up now? Whenever you're ready. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go down my list, and then I'll call, and then I, you're on my list. All right. Um, just a couple. I don't think I have any questions, but I just have a few comments about the process and our output and so on and so forth. Uh, I definitely don't want to be increasing the rates that Joe talked about. The MWRA sends us a bill. We have to pay the MWRA. So as a board, we have to choose the most sensible and fair uh, and appropriate way to distribute that cost to the people who use water. And I think that the proposal that we've got in front of us significantly um, improves the way that we're, where we're passing that cost on to, uh, to the people who live in town. And so I, I very much support this. I'm really happy 
with the process we've got here, I'm really happy with the way we looked at so many of the elements that are included in this question. It isn't, you know, we didn't just take one dial and turn it. Like we looked at everything we've got and we said, okay, what is the right box? So I'm really happy with this with this full thing. And that said, there are some tweaks and changes that as a board we can choose policy-wise to do differently that I think are entirely appropriate. Like we still have all the knobs in front of us. And I think that this report gave us a good idea of what knobs we can turn. And if we do choose to do something like, you know, this is too many phases, we want to do it in fewer phases, and we accept the cost. Like, I think that's a very appropriate conversation for us to have. But we have to pay the bill, <laughs> as we all know. Uh, second, uh, I'm really happy with the proposed solution about the how to handle the, uh, or to remove the need for second meters going forward. Uh, Joe, as you noted, this did come up in a previous town meeting. One of the things we said was we were going to study the issue, and this is the study, and this is the result. And I think that um, Mr. Carabello should be really happy with the with this proposal. But it, you know, he'll be unhappy with the year that's on the, attached to when we actually implement it. But at the same time, this does this more fairly um, puts the cost of sewer with the people who want. And as an engineer, I would describe the solution as elegant. And I think an elegant is high praise for for a solution. Um, I think I'm really, I'm all, I'm, so to, in order to pull out that uh, elegant solution, we have to move to quarterly billing. I also think the quarterly billing is good from a customer service perspective. I think as a town resident, you prefer a quarterly bill because you, you don't get runaway meters or the runaway meters are found faster, stuff like that. I do look forward to being able to pay that, you know, when we, like if we can make this be the first one, you, it's like the, you can subscribe to this as an online bill and not get like this. To me, it feels like a bill that we could make it being our first true, totally electronic bill. Uh, the taxpayer's subsidy element of this, where the uh, part of the debt is on the, if we weren't looking at a 7.5% increase and in, in in a, in a more revenue in December, I would be advocating trimming that number down. I'm, I, I, one of the things I kind of ran on was saying, you know, I'm going to continue to try to either freeze that or roll that back. I don't think it's appropriate looking at these numbers to roll it back any further. The rate increases as you know it's big enough. But I just wanted to signal that if I had an opportunity, it certainly wouldn't be to make it bigger. It would be I'd be moving to make it smaller. Can but you I'm come home with me tonight and talk to my husband? Uh, sure. Yeah. Does he want to be bigger? <laughs> he wants lower. Oh, he wants. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. I mean, he, he wants yeah. the trimming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, the one thing that I don't feel like this we've totally nailed yet. And so I've said this both to Mike and to Adam um, in private and in public, and I'll say it again in private and public. Uh, the unaccounted for water is still higher than I'm comfortable with and higher than other towns. And I know that part of your analysis was looking at unaccounted water. I know we've got a series of programs that are looking at unaccounted water. I just want to, you know, as far as I can, further encourage the research into that because the one thing that we can do that actually, you know, if there is a pot of money out there, or, you know, that, that if you dig out enough holes, we'll find a hole, and at the bottom of that is going to be all of our unaccounted for water, and uh, that'd be nice, you know. All right, um, that's the end of my list. Unaccounted for water. That's is like you, unencumbered cash. We've gone from free. Well, you see, you see, I think, you see, I, I actually don't. I never use the words free cash. I always use unencumbered. unencumbered You've got me I saying it, so yeah. But un unaccounted for water, I think, is like you know, yeah, yeah diplomatically true. correct. I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. Um, some questions, and 10 words or less is fine. I'm not looking for big substance. If I am, then I'll s schedule a meeting for, with any of the individuals. Um, and some of the questions I have, I think when the treasurer gets up, um, he'll address them. Um, not that he hasn't addressed it in the memorandum, but uh, first of all, I'm just curious historically, the 7.5%, who came up with that originally? Was that just a, uh, the town doing the computation, the 7.5% increase? Was it a consultant? Uh, my understanding is that was cooperation between the prior town manager and prior DPW director. Okay. That, that goes back probably four or five years now. Okay. Um, and, and I raise that in the sense of I understand what we're doing right now. We're just doing the 7.5%, and we have um, a possible scenario of estimated um, revenue increases in future years. What I would like to see um, in terms of what I'm looking at right now is something that's more balanced and, and what I'm saying is what on page 3 where it says 2015 3.4 8.2 sewer 
and then 6.0 the next year, 9.4. And then if you jump ahead two years to 2018, 0.5, negative 0.25. In terms of managing and budgeting, and part of the reason why we're going to quarterly is to say, okay, you can get a handle on it more. I would just ask in the future, whatever projections come before us, if we can get something that's, if it can't be a flat 7.5% or 7, uh, 5 and 2 percent, if it can be something that has not quite a varied fl fluctuation there. Um, and, and I understand this is just sort of a guide, but in terms of going with, it, and it seems like we're going to do that, but there's going to be some logistics quarterly billing to say to people we're trying to give you a handle on it. Um, I'd like to see a little different um, revenue increase there. Um, the other questions that I had was, um, it's been cited right now, we can do the 7.5, but we'll have the $600,000 um, deficit loss but we have $2 million in the water enterprise fund. I'm just wondering, um, either the town manager or the former finance committee member, what's our bare minimum balance on that enterprise fund? So that, that's a good question. I mean, and, and I ask that in the sense, the reason why am I asking that? When we're going to do future years, and it's not going to be 7.5, when we're going to do 14, 15, 16, 17, can we factor some of that in? So. We would, we, we have never agreed to an actual number, but we would want to have somewhere around two months worth of revenue or maybe 15 to 20 percent of revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we probably don't want to go very much lower. In fact, we want to be in a position that's a little stronger than the position we're in now. Uh, to, to be able to protect against rate spikes or fluctuations based on a dry or, excuse me, a wet summer mm -hmm. or, or, or just some unexpected matter happening so that we wouldn't be in a situation where the board would have to consider very large increases to make up for a problem. Can you sort of investigate that, whether it's the Finance Committee, whether it's Powers and Sullivan, whether it's Mike Rademacher in concert with the consultant in terms of um, as we start to get a handle on, you know, what the water rates and things are. Just no, I'm, I mean, I'm confident that it's 15 to 20 percent. It's just a matter of executing that as a town financial policy. Okay. So can I actually Yes, no, definitely, definitely. And so, uh, so we are losing or we're spending our reserves at a rate of $600,000 a year. But if we execute the proposed plan by doing a rate increase in July and then the tiers in December or January, you know, January 1st, uh, we would, that's only half, $600,000 a year, that's only six months. So we're talking about spending down 300000 not the full six hundred. Okay. Okay. Did I, I got that correct? Yeah, right. okay. But just as the, as the enterprise fund fluctuates yep. where it does, if we can just get a formula. Yeah, and I just didn't want you to think that we're spending all six right, because we're right. only talking about three. Right, no, okay. exactly. And right. I'm, I'm, I'm just, okay, sorry. I'm challenged by these funds and everything. Sorry and so, to interrupt. Um, I do like... Uh, and, and I want to thank the consultant, Mr. Woodcock, and, and the town manager and DPW director for spending a lot of time with every member of the board of selectmen as well as tonight. Um, I just want to clarify, just so people know the point when you were talking about the um, zero to 200 cubic feet per year, the rate of, of 482 and then over. So basically, one of the questions I had was I saw zero to 200, 482, over 200, 710. And what was told to me was that you wouldn't be charged the same. If you were Little Miss Piggy and you were 300, 400 cubic feet, you wouldn't be charged the 710. You would be charged $4.82 for the first 200 cubic feet. Then once, am I saying that right? It's a cubic right. feet? Yep. And then once you hit 201, 201 plus, then you're hit with the, then your fee is $710. That's correct. So it's not, because some people could look at this and say, geez, I'm, you know, 312, I'm going to get that. Um, and the same thing accordingly with, um, and I'm just saying this actually to get it on the record, yeah, so to yeah. make sure it's my understanding. Same thing with the sewer, the, the zero to 1,000 cubic feet. Again, it's 587, and then when you hit 1,001, anything from 1,001 there on is 1172. Um, you already answered the question about um, the private fire charge how it stays, I, I just want to note that it stays the same flat right now um, for the next, up until 2016, up into a, a two inch diameter um, fire prevention meter, and that's just for the regular homeowner, but then it does go up um, consecutively over years past from what the consultant has cited. You know, you, you check the, the citizens once every 10 years, you know, in, annually for someone larger than that. Okay, so um, I anticipate that um, the, ta the um, 
treasurer will get up because I was just concerned. I would like to see in the future because it seems we are going to go to quarterly billing. Um, what the schedule would be and what would the recommendation would be from the treasurer and whoever else he deems appropriate in terms of I have no idea because I don't pay the bills. <laughs> um, when what the schedule for real estate and excise primary excise taxes. Um, so taking that into account, what would be the best opportunity? for sending this bill out, as well as um, we have a description of equipment, personnel, and storage that would be needed, but what those actual costs were and where they would come from. Um, on the water meter replacement program, is that something that we're already undertaking? Because people have said to me, you don't have to replace my meter. They did it so the guy can stand outside and not come in my basement. basement. So that there's two different issues. There's the automatic meter reader, and then there's the meters themselves. Mm -hmm. So the automatic meter reader program has been done townwide. <clears throat> there has been some meters replaced when we've been able to get into homes uh, mm -hmm. to inspect for sump pumps or other matters. But townwide, there's still a meter replacement program that needs okay, to be so done. Okay, so that's still separate from the automatic meter readers. And, and one of the things I had asked my Mr. Ottermacher and Mr. Chapdelaine when we do that that. We asked Council on Aging Senior Center to come up with some sort of senior plan because I know a lot of elderly residents don't like people coming in their house. Um, and if we if we can find a way that you know we're not coming in your house, coming through your basement, you know whatever whatever Council on Aging or because I know they're very sensitive to those issues. Um, I did ask um, the town manager, and I'd leave it also to the treasurer that what the postage, how much we can actually put in this new quarterly envelope. If on occasions, and I'm not saying this should happen all the time, but if there's for some reason we can mail out four sheets and this bill is three sheets, if there's for some reason we have a town issue or a town notice, do we have another sheet of paper that we can put in there that doesn't add to the postage? If this quarterly billing is that's it you're maxed out that's fine and it should not be political purposes it should be something else you know new trash program things like that and then um besides the treasurer answering my question um i think we really need to renew um and i don't mean to just say this i'd like to get something really substantive out of our, our state delegation um and maybe one of it is the mwra debt assessment if they can get us some relief on that we have these meetings we talk at each other and we're going to get you more money and you know we want more money but um one of the things when i met with you all um and that i heard from the speaker at the microphone is we're kind of bearing the cost for that um and when we have our goals and our mission meeting one of the things i'd like to do is you know identify whatever amount of number five eight things from our state delegation and say you gotta come through on one and if we went through that sort of exercise if everybody agrees i think that getting some sort of relief on the mwr did debt assessment is is the thing so leaving my questions on the table about the logistics okay or anything yeah mr gilligan how's that for a segue <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, members of the board. Uh, the questions have doubled my time from three minutes to probably six, mm -hmm. but I'll try and be succinct. Uh, first and foremost, my memo of May 30th to the town manager was a response to his request for what impacts would occur with uh, Treasury operations with respect to uh, changing the water and sewer billing cycle to quarterly. Um, let me start out by saying uh, I don't like that term quarterly for a specific reason. Uh, people think either fiscal year or calendar year quarters. If we look at a calendar year, the first quarter would end in March. Uh, to answer the specific questions that was asked by each of you earlier, uh, real estate taxes go out on a quarterly basis based on fiscal year. They are due uh, August 1st, November 1st, February 1st, and May 1st. They are mailed out approximately five to six weeks ahead of that due date. So having a bill processing date and a receivables date that coincides with the real estate tax collections, coincidental with water and sewer, is going to cause um, issues. Would you, do you have a different term you'd rather we used? I would, I'd like to use 90-day billing cycle. Okay. We can call it quarterly so long as when the time comes to establish what those quarters are, we pay a focused attention to that because it is a critical issue. Now, in addition to the real estate tax billing, 
There's also motor vehicle excise tax billing. And what we call Commitment 1, or Primary Bill 1, which is mailed out, processed in February and due in mid-March, is 30,000 bills. That also impacts the water and sewer billing cycle that you're anticipating. Now, I want to be very emphatic. What I'm discussing...